Buddha. What's going on, Juco? A tragic case unfolding in West Michigan is making headlines all around the country. Parents who allowed their 10 month old baby to starve to death say they didn't consult doctors because of their religious beliefs. But a 911 call played in court showed a level of callousness that nobody was prepared for. Yes, and I want you to think about something. Actually, everybody at home too. If you had just discovered your 10 month old baby dead, how would you react? What would you say? What would you do? When police got to Seth and Tatiana Welch's Cedar Springs home back in August, they found a 10 month old baby, baby Mary dead, weighing only eight pounds. It is according to the medical examiner who testified weeks and months of starvation for the child whose body could no longer hold out. But what rocked the courtroom was this. He said, when you found her, she was already believed to be deceased, right? Yes. And that's when you consulted with a lawyer? Yep. Do you believe she was beyond help already? Oh yeah, she was, she was dead as a door now. You heard that right. Upon finding the 10 month old dead, Welch called a lawyer first. It would take him 90 minutes to get 911 on the phone and then describe his dead daughter as deader than a doornail. Then there was this exchange with 911. How are you old enough? You know, it's another day, right? You know, it's just, it is what it is. The Welch's attorney tried to convince the court Welch and his wife thought their baby was fine. Police officers first on the scene describe a filthy home infested with flies. The judge binding both Tatiana and Seth Welch over for trial on felony murder and child abuse. And I want to reiterate the fact that this baby did not die because of one missed meal. This is weeks and weeks. This isn't about being very skinny. This is about being dead. The Welches say they didn't want to consult any medical professionals because of their religious beliefs. But back in 2014, they had a run in with a doctor who turned them into CPS. The man accused of murder in the starvation death of his baby is proclaiming his innocence and saying the medical examiner he feels got it wrong. Ten month old Mary Welsh was found dead at the family's home. This is in Cedar Springs on the west side of the state. Self assured. I am not hopeless. I am not despondent. I am not in despair. Def Fine. Yes, I would advise you to be careful what you say from here on out. You will answer to the Lord for everything. And at times, apparently broken. Our family had such a great life on our farm together. <sighs> and it's all been torn apart. Seth Welch, along with his wife, Tatiana Fusari, stand accused of killing their baby girl, starving her to death. Police say Mary Ann Welch died of malnutrition and dehydration. Mom and dad have been charged with child abuse and open murder. The baby was just 10 months old. This was a tragedy. This was not a crime. There was no ill will involved. There was truly no neglect involved. In an interview from jail, Welch says he's got the evidence to prove it. When they found her body, she had a dirty diaper, showing clearly that she had received nourishment. In total, we spoke with him for about 35 minutes. Much of that time he spent talking about his Christian beliefs. We did the best we could for Mary according to our faith. Police say Mary was obviously sick and skinny, but Welch insists that's not true. If it was that drastic, uh, we, we would have done something. Seth, you gotta understand that there are people that are gonna see this and go, no way. How could someone not notice their daughter is suffering? starving to death, dehydrated. When people starve to death, they get sickly. And you'd think maybe if she was starving to death, she would cry, right? She died without a sound in her sleep. Are you saying that you had no idea before this that something was wrong with Mary? Um, no, she was a skinny girl. Welch says he stands ready to defend himself and his wife to fend off the charges now levied against them. I don't fear the judgment of man because God knows how much I love that child. God knows the moments we shared together. 
And according to family court documents, those documents state that after Fazari discovered the baby had died, Walsh in fact waited an hour before calling police. The state has also filed a petition with the court seeking to terminate the couple's rights to their two surviving children who are ages four and two years old. Tonight, a northern Kent County couple is charged with felony murder and child abuse in the starvation death of their 10-month-old daughter. Mary Welch died Thursday in the family's home near Cedar Springs, a death later ruled a homicide. And now we're learning the couple's religious beliefs are a reason they didn't get medical help. Seth Welch's wife, Tatiana Fusari, was in tears as the couple sat side by side for their video arraignment today. You're both charged with what they call felony murder. In court documents, detectives say the couple told them they were aware of their daughter's skinny appearance and low weight for at least a month. The wife told detectives they did not get medical help over fear of CPS taking away their three kids, over distrust of medicine, and because of religious beliefs. All have been topics of some of her husband's rambling videos on Facebook. On doctors. They're priesthoods of the medical cult. On vaccines. The righteous shall live by faith. It's God who, it's God who's sovereign over disease and, and those sorts of things, and and of course ultimately death. So it's he says CPS got called on him when he at first refused to get his oldest daughter vaccinated, and that he did not get the shots for his other two kids, including Mary. It didn't seem smart to me that you would be saving people who weren't the fittest. If evolution believes in survival of the fittest, well, then why are we vaccinating everybody? Shouldn't we just let the weak die off and let the strong survive? He also spoke against worldly things. And I would love to see a commune of, of Christian disciples living off the grid somewhere and, and just living free. And The couple called 911 on Thursday after finding their baby unresponsive at their home on Algoma Avenue in Solon Township. An autopsy found the baby died of malnutrition and dehydration. Today, the judge ordered them to stay in jail without bond. Now, the parents are expected in court later this month to determine if they'll stand trial. Also today, CPS filed a neglect case for their two surviving children, a four-year-old girl and a two-year-old boy who are staying with grandparents. Man, sorry about that. We're in there with Take me a while to get through it. Let me give her. Cheers. Hello. Seth, I don't know if you remember my name or not. It's Jason. This is my, my sergeant. Same name, Jason. Different last name. Seth, I want to talk. I had been, I wasn't in a when you guys are speaking, I'd like to just give some background information just on your marriage, your all that kind of stuff, if you're doing that. I know earlier you talked to these guys in the car and they advised you of your rights. Just due to the simple fact that we're sitting in the chair front of the interview room, those same rights still apply. Do you remember those rights? Do you want me to read them to you again? Was the card that they shown to you for the same card as this? I'll stick that in front of you just as a refresher so you have them if you need them, but um i'm sorry you're going through this i told you that earlier but how long have you and is it tantiana right i was i can keep it tantiana. tantiana how long have you guys been married uh i don't know how long we've been married for like three years um march 2015 i think okay. we've been together um, since september 2011. okay and are, are all of your children your guys's children okay can you tell me about the birth? I mean, like. So, just where was she born? Uh, why I am very anti medical industry is because of uh, what happened with her birth. Um, she coughed one time, uh, and uh, so. They said that they had to keep her under observation for 72 hours to make sure she didn't have a breathing problem. She didn't have a breathing problem. She coughed one time to clear some birth fluid out of her lungs. Right. And they kept us under observation for 72 hours. Um, oh, wow, you're paying for it? Of course, yeah, the bill was about $15,000. So, mm -hmm. um, so that was kind of, um, that was kind of a kick in the rear. Uh, 
And then afterwards we had some problems where I actually had a doctor uh, make a fraudulent CPS claim and actually forge paperwork and stuff like that. And I tried to make a complaint about it, but nobody listens. That was also more of a uh, get rich scheme, wasn't it? Kind of yeah. like, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make some money off from a product that someone really doesn't need. Yes. He issued two separate um, flavors, I don't, forms of paperwork. One that had a bunch of notes on it saying all sorts of bad healthcare things we were doing wrong with the CPS person, and the copy of the paperwork he gave to us that said she was fine. So, um, so that was that was about my last straw with it. Um, was that was that to do with the helmet? And is yeah. that, that all, so? It all started with, if I'm right, it all started with the helmet. Yeah, pretty much. I mean, no, I'm not. I started with the cough, but yeah. the, the, um, to the helmet. I, I'm not a big fan of a lot of the immunization stuff, and so I kind of balked against that, and they didn't like that either. Um, you know, but, they even got to the point where they, um, the first time we changed doctors, they called CPS on us just for changing doctors because the doctor we were seeing was all the way in Byron Center from Cedar Springs. So they called CPS on us because we changed doctors and didn't give them enough notice or didn't give who enough notice so um you know we i'm done with medical stuff we're home birth and uh, it's it's the way to go anyways isn't it yeah we were it, they i, so I heard yeah, like a, uh, hey i'm coming whether you're ready or not yeah yeah and so um yeah. So yeah. So there you go. That that's about. So and you know and I and that's kind of what uh, Tatiana explained too is that she was going through immunization. She was with a, and everything was kind of okay. But uh, there was both of you had done some research and you weren't too keen on uh, immunizations. And then come along the helmet. Mm -hmm. You guys wanted to get a uh, second opinion on the helmet, so mm -hmm. you don't need anything. Uh, and so you chose not to get a helmet, and then that's kind of when the CPS referral came along, mm -hmm. the failure to thrive uh, type referral, if, that's, mm -hmm. if this is sounding correct. Mm -hmm. um, and then you guys... Um, and do you remember when she was born? Yeah, she's, um, well, I guess I had it refreshed today. I, I guess from what Tatiana said, she's 14 ounces, so. And then how, how much, um, seven, two. I, and were they all about the same length as right they're now? all the same size. There's they're, 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 Born to oh, yeah, 21 inches, like we're all the same, yeah, and then like exactly the same. Mm -hmm. Wow, what's the idea of that? Yeah, and she was even earlier, too. That's why I just didn't, it never, you know, bothered me too much that she was skinny because she was, she came out, yeah, yeah. So, so you. Skinny. When did it first? When did it like dawn on you that she's thin? Oh, dude, when she came out. I mean, she's she been came, thin. Yeah. But now, um, Tatiana, was, it, was she going to labor? She had just been up pacing around all night, and then baby starts sliding out. And things are a lot easier when you do them at home. I'll tell you what. Well, yeah, you don't have to drive anywhere. <laughs> yeah, and and the position they put you in in the hospital is very. Bad medicine, just whatever. What position are you at home? And you just stand up. Do you really? Yeah, and the gravity just shoots the baby right now. You don't, you, they don't have you up, facing upward, pushing against the gravity. It makes no sense. Um, no, it actually wouldn't make sense if you think about it. it yeah, I, never seen that. So you, you have to just kind of be under there, like you're, you're like the quarterback. Mm hmm.
and um, on that day. Yeah, she she got up there. She got up there. Um, uh, you know, she was late for the delivery. She checked over the baby. Says she's healthy. And, you know. Is that what she does? A uh, midwife, they kind of tie off their tubes or whatever it is they have to do, and they just they <laughs> yes, they do the dirty work that anybody could do. It's just a lot, a lot of us aren't. Uh, <laughs> yeah, a lot of us just aren't willing to do it. But yeah, really, what they I mean, they you know they mop up the blood and yeah, you know they go over like you know your check sheet of check this to see if the baby's healthy. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So. And then do, do they do all the recording of birth, or is that something you guys do? Or I, I, I think ish. Yeah, it seems like they would. My do. my wife kind of deals with more of the paperwork. paperwork. Yeah, I'll blame you there. <laughs> so, so you said that. So you weren't concerned about about her being skinny. I get comments that she's bigger than some six year old boys now. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, same size, skinny, but she, it just took a while, and then after, like, you know, after, I think it was about 10 months to a year, she started really putting on weight, and, you know, now she's, you saw her. Yep, yep. And and she, she didn't need a helmet. Her head looks just fine. Yeah. So, um, what was, um, Tatiana working? No. So, so Tatiana was home, and, and she did all the feedings, yeah. right, right from the source. Right. Um, if if Tatiana went to Meyer, yes, and that was in case she needed to latch on. Yeah. Type thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, because with the other two, Tatiana would leave a food source at home because she was working some. Um, oh yeah, when she would go to um, the farmer's market for her farm produce business. Um, but last year, which is last year, so we did that, she took both kids with her pretty much every time. Okay. Where I couldn't go to the market anymore, so I stayed home. You stay home work on the farm? Yep. So, um, so... Feeding the children has never been a real part of your response. Like more. A little bit. I've been like I've been feeding. Like her her dinner, uh, you know I feed her tons of solid food. I feed her three or four of those you know those Gerber cups, uh, yep. and she just wolf them right down, no problem. Were, were you were you guys buying solid food or making solid food? Both. Okay. What what were you making? If we made anything, it was just like sweet potatoes grinded up and yeah yeah she made the baby. Yeah. So. Yeah, so what she what she was saying is um, what she could recall is, is uh, like some vegetables out of your garden. Oh, yeah. Maybe whatever it was you had growing at that time. Yeah. And then she'd throw something in it, maybe breast milk, to make the vegetables more palatable. Pel pel whatever that word is. Palatable. Yeah. And then she would make like a little fruit smoothie, maybe some blueberries, some, some non yeah. like that. And then she did say that, potatoes and stuff like mm -hmm. that. When did, you, when did you guys start with her on solid foods? been a couple months now um since the beginning of summer okay okay i would i would want to say maybe since since april because that's when tatiana started working at her job so basically we were only gonna let her was eating solid foods yeah, just yeah, fine yeah. so I, th I would say april okay and then that was supplementing nursing mm -hmm. with solids. Mm -hmm. Has has nursing has solids ever completely taken over? Is nursing was nursing still? Okay? She still nurses, yeah. Okay, yeah. so so what would you say was her primary? A nursing or the solids? Or, or, we, or we can't say that. I can't scientifically say. I'd say probably at this point we were really working on trying to make it more solid food only, especially because my wife's pregnant again. So. Um, you know how that all works. Um, I do know how that works. Right. So, <laughs> so you know, you're trying to um, get her Check. over to just be on solid. Yeah. So you're you're more familiar with this than me with having younger kids. Typically, at what age is it that they switch over to solids? Um, do you remember? 
Nope. Nope, me neither. Uh, do you remember? I don't. Yeah. I, I thought it was when they started teething, but... I bet you all of our wives know. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, you're supposed to, I, I think you're, you're supposed to transition it in starting at, like... Oh, uh, starting at six months, you're supposed to transition it in. And then by two years old, the kids are supposed to be... Okay, all right. Off the teeth. Off the teeth. So, um... So, man... I'm sorry. <laughs> Tatiana. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, no worries. That, that's my mistake. Tatiana would work, and, and when she started working, she started with fewer hours. She started working mm-hmm. four-hour shifts, I think it was. Yeah, like three, four days a week, yeah. And then she moved up to, now she's working... Full, basically full-time. Was it like three, oh, three to... Three to eleven, yeah. Eleven, okay. When did that begin, you remember? About when-ish? July 4th. Okay. So starting July 4th, did more of the responsibilities of me? Yeah, I guess so. So from 3 p.m., because I know obviously when, when uh, Tatiana was there and she, she would nurse her, um, did she leave you bottles of breast milk to nurse her or did you not no. nurse? No, we just had, uh, that's when I would give her solid food. Okay. So... Well, she would leave work 2.30-ish, I'm assuming, mm-hmm. and how many times um, But what the normal schedule is, is Tatiana puts baby down at 2.30. I've got some time to, like, kind of let my brain simmer down because work get up and work in the morning yeah so I let my brain have some time to simmer down kids have quiet time and then they're up again by like 4 35 and then i'm up with or i might feed her two of the cups pick her up for a half hour walk around so the food settles and then come back and feed her the rest and then take her outside for like an hour hour and a half mm-hmm. Then bring her back and, and put her back down. So dinner time is fine. Yeah, it, it was nothing too. We're not too, um, you know, regulated. We're not too right. uh, to uptight. But um, yeah, generally, you know, she'd get up. Let's just say general timing would be up again. You know, four thirty to five. Um, you know, she'd eat five thirty, be back in bed by like six thirty. Okay. And then uh, she'd be back in bed at 6.30, and then when was the next feeding? Um, a, lot, a lot of times I think that's probably my wife breastfeeds her at night. Oh, when so, she'd get home from work? Yeah, okay. so I, I wouldn't really know about that. Because um, you'd usually be in bed by then? Yeah. Early so, um, <laughs> mornings on the farm? Yeah. So, um, yeah, so my wife, my wife might breastfeed her in the middle of the night, um, you know, or, you know, breakfast time when she gets up again. So typically speaking, that that dinner meal would be the because then she would sleep till your wife got home, and so that would be the your, the last. So you have to just feed her really once, once, yeah. yeah. Or or if she wanted to goof off a little bit before feeding, you might split that once up into twice. So at at what point um, did you guys become concerned about her weight? Um. Okay. So. It's always kind of it's it's always kind of been there. It's always been something that we've watched. Um, however, it never sh- I'll say it never seemed to cause because it never it never did. Um, but I just know you guys are watching my words, so um, <laughs> it never caused her. Let's put it this way: she never was sickly in any way, mm-hmm. slow, lethargic. Um, no, no, no health indicators right. that said anything was wrong other than that she was skinny, which I just, I, re, I didn't, I, I just didn't let it get to me um, because, like I said, very skinny. Um, she started putting on weight recently. We really started really, you know, pounding the uh, the solid food down in the last like month or so. Really make sure she gets some chicken, potatoes, cheese, stuff. Like that. Um, so and when you started putting the high proteins, 
How, how recently was that? There two. Okay. And because um, that's what Tatiana said is that a, a, probably the last month or two is when you guys actually became a little concerned about the weight. Yeah, and but I kind of was like, because my mom's always been honest about it. Um, always. She's always on you. Get get some food in this kid. Yeah, she always like, yeah, wait, are you guys feeding him? Come on, go look at the garbage. I mean, there's like, I can't feed the kid enough. Right. Uh, she just. Um, when was the last time your mom was on you about it? But that's you know, here's doing. the thing. Here, exactly. Here's the thing. The last time my mom said something about it, she said that she. Wait. Oh, okay. So that's why. I was so you thought you were in the right direction. When was that? Last week. Last week Sunday. Not this last Sunday, the one before that. Yes. Okay. And you were at your mom's. She was at your place. She was at our house. And she thought that she was she was gaining weight. She no, she remarked that her cheeks seemed a lot fuller. Okay. I remember that specifically. So. so so a month or two ago, you two became concerned and started putting some proteins to her, some chickens and cheeses and whatever, just just trying to bulk her up a little mm -hmm. bit. And and did you believe it was starting to work? I seemed to definitely notice that she was getting heavier. Um, Tatiana mentioned it to me. My mom mentioned it to me, so I would say yes. So Tatiana thought she was she was getting healthier too, and that she was mm -hmm. getting bigger. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because um, she's always been growing long. She's just never put the meat like that's the, she's yeah. never put the meat on. Right, right, yeah. So Tatiana, I was correcting if this is wrong. Tatiana said that, and, and it's kind of what you said, but especially about the last month. You guys became concerned that you started uh, very um, consistently and um, regularly. regularly, heartily praying over Lord help her gain weight. What, does that sound right? I get. I, you know, I don't. Um, she may have. I haven't really been so much. Okay. Um, but I'm glad to hear she was. Yep. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Um, so, you guys, you, you, when she started losing her weight, you thought maybe it was just a growing spurt, and, and she had lost weight, and so she was getting, and, um, is that what, is that what you attributed her, her, uh, I'm sorry, not the weight loss, the sleeping to a growth spurt, is that what you oh, attributed yeah. it to? Oh, yeah. I think maybe three times in the last week where she slept so long, I had to, like, nudge Tatiana and make some jokes now that I would. Yeah, I don't know. You know, um, but you don't really think no. too much of it at the time. Um, mm -hmm. um, so, uh, sorry. No, um, sorry. It's all right. So yeah, there's been a couple. There's been a couple mornings where then uh, where she was she had been sleeping for 15, 16 hours straight. And, you know, Tati just went and woke her up. She woke right up. Oh, look who's a hungry baby kind of thing. You know, I don't know. So so today when it happened, I didn't really think anything of it differently. I just thought it was, oh, another sleepy baby. You know, she was, especially, you know, my wife, like, keeps her up all morning. So she's just exhausted sometimes by the time she goes to bed. And, you know, if, if she doesn't, if she doesn't make a peep, if she doesn't make a sound, or if she's, if she's in there and, you know, everything has, as far as I know, everything is fine when she's put down. I mean, I'm not inclined to wake the kid up. Right, sure. Um, but, so, you, do you bathe? Uh, did you ever bathe her? I didn't, know. Do you ever change your diaper? Oh, yeah. When was the last time that you figured you changed? It might have been yesterday morning. Because I'm trying to imagine when Tatiana goes to work from, from leaves at 2.30. Oh, usually when she gets up to eat, I would change the diapers. diapers. Then you got daddy duty, you uh -huh. would change the diapers and stuff. Yeah. But Seth, here's the thing, is that she's so tiny. Was, it, was there never a time that you just like, well, there's something really wrong? There was never a time where I thought there was something really wrong. Um, I did say to Tatiana, you know, hey, um... You know, with her being the age she is, let's really try to see if, like, the protein, um, the, the fat and the protein, it, as her digestive system is developed, let's see if that 
kicks things into gear and it's not, you know, let's go see a doctor. Because, mm-hmm. um, you know, she's, she's a skinny little girl. When did you have that conversation? I might have been two weeks ago. Yeah, because even at that point, I was just a little, yeah, but, you know, you, how they going to hurt. So how much, uh, two weeks ago, how much did you figure that she weighed? I don't know. Well, I know she's the same size now, smaller, bigger. I don't know. Okay. Um, so, so today, tell me about today. I know it's tough. Take it um, out. yeah, you know, well, I just kind of like woke up like a regular day. I wasn't feeling very well last night. Um, so I kind of, I, I slept in because I didn't sleep very well. Um, um, I, I think I rolled out of bed like 8 to 8.30, took care of some chores, uh, and then I laid back down, um, and then my wife told me she was uh, going to go right up the street to the neighbor's house to go get some kids. Uh, And when she came back, I woke up, and then I guess she decided. You know, tell me. And that's that. So, so did what did you do when she told you that? I I split out of bed and raced to the room. you know, so you're helpless, dead. right? Like, what you know, what to do? What am I gonna do? Yeah. I could, I, I could, I could tell she was dead from looking at her. Um, but Tatiana couldn't. She's a mom. Right. She's so. Yep. Um, I'm used to dealing with a lot of dead bodies, but the farm. Yeah. So I know what they look like. Um. That was that. So what did Tatiana do? She tried to do CPR. <laughs> So, were you, were you in there when she was doing, were you in the same room with her when she was trying CPR? Yeah, I, I, yeah. And then what were you doing? She's the one who knows how to do all that kind of stuff, right. so I was just, I was looking and watching and, um, just thinking about what to do, thinking about, you know, just trying to think about what to do next. So what did you do next? Call my dad. Okay, and then what'd you tell your dad? Um, I don't know what to do. What, what did he say? Well, I, I kind of figured I was supposed to call the police. Um, I just, I, I don't know. I don't have any experience with it sure, now. Sure. Um, well, right. I didn't then, I do now. Right. Um, so I, I just called him and, you know, said, hey, hey, should I, should I call the police or, or what? I don't, I don't know how this works. Um, and he said, yeah, um, you know, we'll be on the way, um, you know, call them when, when we get there kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, it had been about an hour and some change and I was starting to get impatient cause I did not want to, I know, I know how it looks when people wait to make a police call. So I, so, you know, I just. Mm-hmm. So you called prior to your so I, so I got a patient, I called him back, I'm like, are you guys, are you guys here yet? Cause it's, you know, it's like 11.05 now. I don't want to, I don't, I knew there was going to be a process too. So mm-hmm. I wanted to get things going. Yeah. And, um, yeah, they were in Cedar uh, at the gas station and um, they're like, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll be there. And so then I called you guys. So, um, yeah, cause obviously you, you're an intelligent man. So, you know, obviously for us, and you just said it yourself, it looks weird, right? That, but you, I'm saying you didn't know what you're doing, but in our world, we deal with this a lot, and so we don't know every single person in the county and everyone's personalities. Sure. And, sure. Um, and I would have, I wanted to just like call you guys first, but not, I I was following my legal advice. So, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry if that is a problem at all. I just. Uh, just doing what the lawyer told me to do. No, nope. well, here's the thing I'm not saying, I'm just telling you. I'm just confirming what you said. It looks weird. You know, is that, is, is that's all. We're not like saying that you did something horrible in those two hours. We're just saying that, you, you know, it's not the, it's not the norm. So, sure. um, 
Well, so what did you guys do during the two hours? We sat there and cried. Yeah. Tatiana called it her job. Yeah. We knew guests were coming. Did you clean so anything up? Yeah, we cleaned up the house a little bit. Um, Why was that? This is a mess. Uh, I knew we were going to have my parents over. <laughs> um... <laughs> So oh, my mom getting after you. Yeah. After so help. um, yeah. So you know we like. So what all what all the house cleaning entail? Um, wiping up the counter and sweeping the floor. Okay. How'd the kids handle it? They don't really get it. They, um, mm-hmm. they don't really get it. Mm-hmm. So. But so here's the thing. Looking back. She can't even weigh eight pounds right now. She only she only eight pounds. Okay. I don't know if she weighs six pounds. Is it, is it, I mean, she's tiny. Was that never an alarm for you? Was it never an alarm? Like, man, she's not where she needs to be. This is, I mean, I can see all of her bones. Mm-hmm. Well, what I just told you is, what I just told you in regards to that matter, um, I, um, so yes, there was, which is what I told you. I also generally, um, I don't, um, I don't trust the medical system so much as other people. So when it says, oh, it, it needs to be this, 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 like I said, you know, I had a doctor tell was muted and needed a head shaping helmet. Uh, I was told that she was underway, um, fraudulently. I, I just, I know how they work, and I know they're they're in business, um, and that healthy people don't make them any money. Um, so. So that that kind of skewed your. Yeah, it skew it skew the way it does. It changes the way that we do things a lot differently than most other people. Um, but looking at your daughter, looking back. You as a parent, as a father, didn't you have any concern for her looking at her? Yes, I did. But you just didn't think it was concern that the medical field could fix? One, uh, I would say somewhat. Two, uh, I'm, I was kind of more in that I have never encountered a health problem where basically if you don't do the right things and be patient, that it works itself out, um, especially with the kids. Um, I get as we get older, there's there's other things. Um, I was not happy about how thin she was, but I also, I also, you know, have the belief that, um, you know, God didn't make us all, you know. The same. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, so I kind of chalked it up to that. I was not, I was not happy about how skinny she was. You just like, if you look in the house, um, you can see all the baby food that's potatoes with chicken and cheese and all, all everything matches up with what I'm saying. Um, I guess I, uh, Did your she was always very healthy. She was never sick. She answered that way. So. Yeah. So it, so it never, if she had been sickly in any way, it, it would have been okay. That's it. She's sickly and skinny, but she was always just skinny. But, but Seth, that's, that's where I'm going to disagree with you. Okay. I, I'm a parent. I'm a father. I have three children. Mm-hmm. He's a father, you're a father, mm-hmm. okay? And I'm just being honest with you, okay? Because I don't know how to be anything other than, okay? And I'm telling you right now, I've been doing this job for a long time, okay? And he'll tell you when I walked in that bedroom today, all right? I started crying, okay? I looked at that little baby, and I looked at her for a millisecond. Mm-hmm. And I knew that she wasn't right. And I knew that she wasn't right for some time. Okay? And you're her father. Yep. And I'll tell you, I, I saw her when she was dead too. Just, she, was very, she was much more gaunt when she was dead than she ever was when she was alive. I mean, I got, I got pictures on my phone. I, I, I'm... Yeah. Right, but, but when, let me ask you this. When's the last time you saw that baby without any clothes on in a bath? Me, I, I've never, I've never given her a bath. Okay, when, what, so, but you, you changed her diaper mm-hmm. maybe a day, day and a half mm-hmm. ago, correct? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm not putting words in your mouth. You said that, correct? Mm-hmm. 
How did you not, when you looked at her a day and a half ago, changing her diaper and realize that my daughter is skin and bone. When I looked at her belly in the house, okay? And I'm not exaggerating this. Oh, I know. I could see the outline of her intestines through her stomach. I could see her spine completely through her back. I could see every one of her ribs through her chest. Yeah, I, like I said, I mean, like I, uh, like I said, I'm not happy about it either. Um, you know, you're welcome to go through my garbage and look at the baby food containers. Yeah. And I, I, Seth, did you, here's the thing. I, I'm certainly not knocking on his faith. I, I have the same faith and the same creator that you have. Does your faith prevent you from allowing you to use medical services? No. So you would use medical services or you would not? So it's some, just, just your experience that prevents you, not your faith. No, in some ways, like for example, on the immunization, it started out um, with a rational concern. Um, but yeah, faith-based, I, I, you know, you'd have to strap us down to a table and put it in there. Okay. Does that apply to your children too? Yes. Okay. So you wouldn't do... Would I do anything different? Oh yeah, I totally would. I. I I would have listened to my elders. I would have taken her to go see a doctor. Because that's what your parents were telling you. You said el You said your elders. Yeah, you know, older people would say, "Oh, you know, she's, you know, like yeah. what you guys are saying." Yeah. So, um, how far so back? How far back would you go when you would do something different? How far back would I go that I would do something different? When would you take her? When would I have taken her? Knowing, knowing what you know today. Knowing what I know today, I would probably, I'd probably take all the kids to the doctor, at least for preliminary stuff. No, and I'm talking about looking back. Was it, was it a week ago? Was it two weeks ago? Was it three weeks ago? Was it a month ago? When, when would you have done something different when you, I mean, you, you know, this didn't happen overnight. She didn't get this malnourished and skinny overnight. Okay, this is a, a, a lengthy process, mm -hmm. okay? And this has been going on for some time. That's what I'm asking. At what point, you knowing what you know today, if you could go back and reset the clock to try to prevent today, how far back do you think you would go? Um, I don't know because I, I I can't tell you. Um, you know, maybe maybe the first mention somebody had that I respected that she was too skinny. That she what, was too. How thin. long ago was that? I don't know. Like I said, she's been skinny since she was born. So what? How many how many people have you respected have told you that? My mom and. My mom. <laughs> How was your dad? You probably figured dad's just back in your mom's play? Pretty much. Yeah. So, today, at what point today did you and or Tatiana think, this doesn't look good? The size of her, all that, this doesn't look good. Today? Yeah. Well, we didn't, we kind of like woke up and she was dead, so. No, but I mean after that, when you were thinking that this is like, for, as far as it doesn't look good that, that we didn't get her the medical treatment or whatever, what, at what point today did you think that? Um, I don't know, I guess I haven't, I, I guess I haven't really worried about it too much. Did, 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 did mom feel concerned because of she knew the weight was so low or what was your what was your discussion like with her about that yeah she just mentioned that she's skinny okay. but what you know the thing is is that it it's like yeah she was skinny but that would be like the only thing it's, it's, it's like okay she's not skinny and then she'd be fat 
And it's just like, you know, everybody's always got something to nitpick about a baby kind of thing. No, and you're right about that. But, but Seth, there is a difference. And I have pictures. There is a difference between and Mary. No, I know. She was, she was thin. You, it no, used to, no, wasn't thin. Yeah, so I know. I picked her up. I know how skinny she was. It used to hurt. I used to, I, I, what, what am I going to do? Like inject her with liposuction? And that, what are the doctors going to do? But, but, because here's the thing. There's more, you know, you know what the leading cause of death in this country is, don't you? Well, yeah, it's medical malpractice. It is. I, I'll give you that. It's more dangerous, <laughs> it's more dangerous to take your kid to the doctor than only That's not know. what most people think. Most people think it's know. cops, but. I, I get what you're saying. So there you go, we got. No, no, I get what you're saying, because there's, there's some stats that go along with some of this. But here's what I'm saying, though, is that in this case, when we know, because you got, I know you guys are doing what you're saying you're doing. I know you're feeding him. You're feeding him protein. We can see it. We're not down either. We can look around the house like, these guys are piling food in this girl. So when that's not working, then we know there's something. There's Crohn's disease. There's diabetes. There, there is a disease that has to be that's not allowing this girl to absorb the nutrients for these foods. And you know that. Yeah, you're correct. I do know that. I guess I just never... I never thought of it where there's no family history. Um, like I said, recently, um, regardless of, of what the pictures show, you know, people who've know who've been around her for 10 months, you know, commented, we all noticed that she was getting bigger. So I was just like, oh, finally, okay, we're through that pro we're through that stage. Uh, I was worried for a little bit there, but she's putting on the weight now. Um, you know, she's, she's clearly getting heavier. Um, so I, I just, I kind of thought we were through it. Let me ask you a, a, an honest, just an honest answer. Do you, re, do you feel responsible in any way for what happened today? I feel like that's a bit of a trap question, but, um, no, I, 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 or do you just say honest? Or do you think it's just God's will? Well, just because it might be God's will doesn't mean that there's not some that it's not His will according to our actions, or it doesn't mean that we're not responsible in some way for what has come about. And so, do I? I take responsibility on myself for anything that goes wrong in my life at all, even if it's totally not my fault. I still, what could I have done? Um, you know, I'm sure you had something like that in Marine Corps. You know, where it's just like. Not, you're not always in control of everything, but take care of what's on your end to be taken care of. Yeah. And you gotta watch your six. Yeah. So, um, you know, for me, do do I take some responsibility? Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, I'll never forget. It. And uh, <laughs> I thought there'll be like 30 minutes where if Tatiana carries this baby to term and you guys let us keep it, I doubt there'll be 30 minutes where there's not somebody checking through the people with a light on in the room. That, how did that hole get in the door again? About five years ago when I styled myself a patriot and a gun nut and all that good stuff, all that cool right wing stuff, I uh, was working on my AK in the gas tube. I was a total idiot and like the gas tube was stuck and I was trying to bang it in there and I went and the hammer flew out the back of my hand right into the door. Hey, if the AK don't work, get a hammer. <laughs> well, why is Tatiana saying she put the hole in the door? That's what I'm confused about. Because it's, cause she went through a lot when she was a kid. Her her memory can sometimes be a little, a little about details and stuff like that. So I don't know why she would, I don't know why she'd say that. Well, we're gonna get you guys out of here in a second, but I have a difficult question to ask you because, I, and I'm asking this, and maybe it was asked, but I know I'm gonna have, I know I'm gonna be asked this question in the morning. So, have you or Tatiana or your mother, your your mother and father, back at the house? Did anybody talk about funeral arrangements? What funeral home you would like her to go to, or? Uh... Yeah, we've kind of touch and go dealt with it. Okay. Um, Something you guys are gonna start thinking about. Yeah, I, um, I think I can't just like bury her under an apple tree or something like that. No. 
you have to ask, we don't know all the no. rules of burying and stuff. They're, I don't know, maybe you can get a permit to do something like that. Yeah, or you gotta Google it maybe. Yeah, <laughs> I have no idea. But you can't just bury your under like, without getting some kind of process as far as they know, so. Yeah, um, my mom said she would just, she didn't know his people, so she didn't do it. The, the other difficult thing here is, and I know you're not going to be happy with it, okay, but I need to um, collect your phone as evidence as part of this investigation, sure. okay? Um, one of the things, um, is there a passcode on your phone? No? Okay. There's two ways that I can go about getting into your phone, okay? I have a form either in here, and if I don't, I can run down the hall and get one. There you go. Okay. No, I, I wasn't doubting you. There, but there's two ways. Um, we have a lab here in Grand Rapids that we bring these phones to when they get processed. Basically what they do is they make an image of the hard drive on your phone. And um, and then we can return the phone back. Okay. But in order for me to go through your phone, it's not like I'm going to walk out of here and go back to my desk and start looking at everything on your phone. Because I can't do that. Unless you do one of two things. There, there, there's two ways that I can do that. I have a consent form that I will allow you to read and sign if you would like to provide me with consent to go through your phone, or I can petition the court for a search warrant to, to go through your phone. It's up to you. Fine, so, let's do it. To do the consent form? Okay. Can I like, just go through my messages first and clear everybody up? No, it, it's got to stay the way it is. Okay. Um, let me see if I have that form. And then as soon as I get your phone back from the lab, I'll try and get it over to the lab tomorrow. And if I can get your phone back to you by the end of the day tomorrow, I will. Okay. Otherwise, um, I'll get it to you as soon as I can. What, are you just going to like bring it to the house or something? I'll run it to the house. Um, okay. Or if you have another, like, you probably don't have another phone number for me to call you at. Um, Seth, remind me, what was your middle name again? Michael. Birthday. Take a minute and just read that form, and then uh, if you're okay with that, just sign right there when you're done reading it. One thing I am going to do in your presence. See, just so you know that she's not. She doesn't look emaciated, does she? Not in that picture, yeah. no. Um. I'm going to put your phone in airplane mode in your presence. Okay. That way nothing else can come into the phone while we have it and nothing can go out obviously. So, um, you know what, what this is, an iPhone what? The 8 or 6, maybe 5, I don't know. All right. Okay. All right, give me five minutes. And uh, we're going to get you and Tatiana right home, okay? Great, thanks. Mm -hmm. Tatiana, this is my supervisor. We've seen each other, but I don't think we've met. I'm sorry for your loss. I know that's uh, obviously the last thing you want to be doing is this. So, 
we haven't spoke yet. I know you've already spoken with Jason. Uh, my name is Jason as well. Um, <clears throat> but some of the same stuff that I gotta turn this brain off. Some of the same stuff that he's already talked about. I wasn't there when you guys spoke, so I'd like to go over some of that. Um, obviously, he's already advised you of your constitutional rights uh, up at the scene. You still remember those rights. Mm -hmm. That's, um, Thank you for clarifying. Yep, no problem. Uh, do you want me to read them to you again, or you're still good to go? All right. Uh, like I told you, you're not under arrest, but because you're in this fine facility, would you like to just remind you of those? So, um, really, what I kind of just like to do is just uh, to get a better understanding of how we are here today and kind of go back a few years even just to get to know you and your family a little bit. So, okay. do you go by Tantiana or do you have a nickname? Tantiana. Tantiana? Okay. Nicknames don't really seem to work. You can just give us an easy nickname. Mm -hmm. uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> How many children do you have? Sorry, five. Three. Three? Okay, yep. <laughs> All right. And, and, yeah. Uh, and, and Mary. Mm -hmm. Okay. How old is your oldest? Four. And how, and your oldest? At the scene there, I was told that he's verbal. Is that true that he doesn't, or he's very verbal? He's very verbal. Oh, oh I, I don't know. Someone, and you know how he gets mixed, and, uh, you whisper in one person's ear and as it goes down the chain, uh -huh. maybe he was just being shy. So that's he tends to get shy. But yeah, he did, he did some high-fiving for me, but. Um, he knows lots of words. He's just, um, sometimes big sister can be a little dominating so maybe that's what it is him, but, um, and probably all the commotion probably really made him shy and didn't, yeah, didn't want to so maybe they were just saying he was non-verbal right now maybe that's what Possibly. it was um, medical issues or any nothing like that okay not at all and for is she in any kind of daycare does she go no. does she have preschool um no i homeschool i have my um my degree in early childhood oh, you education, know. Okay. so I Good for you. thought I'd just, from being at home at the farm, I can at least give them an initial education before yeah. Yeah. we decide to send them off to some sort of grade school. Absolutely. So, have you been Absolutely, yes. Okay. Like, and what kind of stuff? She is fluent in her alphabet, her numbers at least up to 20. Mm -hmm. um, although she knows other numbers, like 160, but not in sequence. Um, okay. She's practicing her writing. Mm -hmm. um, she just has a little issue with the numbers. They get a little backwards. But, um, okay. She knows how to spell words like hi, cat, dog. Oh. Um, she knows the list that starts with E. She kind of do better than Jason. <laughs> the hi and the cat and dog part. Um, <laughs> so does um, a doctor that she sees, does she have a primary doctor? Not anymore. We okay. did have great and everything. We just, uh, we only go if there's an issue and there just hasn't been. Oh, good. When, when she was two. Okay. And, and what was that for? A checkup. Do you know what clinic he's with? It's his own practice. Okay. Um, I know it's in Rockford. Do okay. you remember where in Rockford? Okay. That's all right. No big deal. So, she she was there for her two year checkup. Mm -hmm. Was she ever there prior to the two year checkup? Yes. For yeah, what type? Eighteen month checkup. Eighteen month. Any other one? Uh, no, we had her. Okay, um, so so prior to the eighteen month checkup, she was with a different doctor. Yes. Do you don't remember that? Okay. 
sure. there's a limit um, called PPS on us because we What were your occasions to be with him? Um, her preliminary vaccinations. So, where... Metro Byron. And then, so from there... Off the top of your head, you remember? Maybe, maybe six months. Six months. Maybe. Yeah, I won't hold you to it. I know it's a while ago. And so at early six. Early enough for her to get. It was we were. Um, yeah, early enough for her to get her vaccinations, and um, we were consistent with it. And then afterwards, we we just did a lot of research and we didn't feel the need to do it anymore. Um, mm -hmm. Dr. Williamson was very um, gracious with us and understanding and was yeah. like, you actually don't have to do that at all. Mm -hmm. Okay, and so at what visit, obviously it was probably the last visit, mm -hmm. is when he recommended the helmet, the yeah. head shaping. But so there was never any concern about the shape of her head from zero to 18 months? No, it, and it, that's why it was such a concern for us as to why he would just bring this up out of, out of nowhere. And so what was the problem with the shape of her head according he to him? He said it was, it was off. It was just not circular. And, I mean, I wasn't offended, I was just taken aback, and then um, my uh, staff found out that they, it's commission-based with these products that they try and push, uh -huh. so um, we don't know specifically, this is here today, right. sure. but we think that we'll he's it. trying to push the helmet, it was a $3,000 helmet, for that and called TPS and said that we were being neglectful or, or something or other. Okay. And uh, then that's when we went to So was it the first time he ever pushed that home? Was it right around the 18 month? That's the first I time he I believe so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Unless he spoke to Seth otherwise, but I, I doubt it. I've never even heard of a head shaping helmet. Have you, have you ever seen young children? It, it looks like um, some children with Down syndrome will wear it and it's just, it like cuts here and it cuts like that. And it's big and clunky. Maybe I have seen that. Right? Maybe I have, yeah. It, it looks quite invasive, and I just am heavy. And I just want her to, like, get neck problems or back problems. Mm. She didn't need it. Right, 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 yeah. So, um... The two-year checkup after that, we haven't needed it. How's the shape of her head? <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, You've seen her. <laughs> yeah. So that, that worked out just... It was, okay. Yes. How does that work? Wonderful. Was that, was that a choice? Yeah. Was that like, um, what do they call it, like a uh, midwife or something? Yeah, Mid it was a home birth. Okay, and so how does that work? When you choose to have, first off, I mean, why did you go from being from her in a hospital and then some transformation here where you said we want to do um, um, the midwife, yeah. Yeah, the, um, being at the hospital was very invasive. They uh, with me after she was born. They wanted her out of the room. They wanted us there for three days um, because uh, apparently I pushed out a lot more fluid than they were expecting, so she coughed. Mm -hmm. Oh, we need to keep her protesting. And then um, 
Lesniks is because they just wanted to charge us more. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Conspiracy theory, yada yada, whatever. Yeah, you never know though, right? Exactly, right. you don't. So I just think they wanted to keep us there for three more days, and then we had, they wouldn't like allow me to see her except to nurse, and they were saying, oh, you can just keep her food here, and don't worry, well, you can rest. I said, I want to see my baby. Yeah. And then they would have like Wick come in and give me information, and then, you want to have newborn portraits? No, can I just go home? Right, right, right. So we just didn't want Anymore. So that just turned you off to the... And having a home birth right after uh, I gave birth, Seth went out and bought me a pizza and I ate that whole pizza. <laughs> right <laughs> after hey, birth. Bonus. Right on my couch. So, so you're, how does the midwife work? Is that through a hospital, through a clinic? How do you reach yeah. How does this How does um, this work? Google. <laughs> oh, okay. I just searched on midwives in the area or um, also there are Facebook groups like home births. Um, in West Michigan, Cedar Springs um, home birthing, and I just asked a lot of different women for advice. Um, so now, what is a what what is a midwife? Is it someone that knows what they're doing, or could I be a midwife? Uh, you cannot be a midwife. Okay. You need medical training. Well, okay, that's a, that's what okay. I wanted. So they it's, is it like actually a certification? Yes. Oh, okay. All right. Um, and she has been training with her grandmother. Excuse me. Well, that's all right. Who's been training with her grandmother? So I trusted. I like the whole genealogy. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. She's she been gave from birth the family. to all three of her kids at her home, and mm. um, has been doing it for about forty years before me. So. So when a midwife becomes involved in your pregnancy, how early on do they become involved? As early or as late as you'd like. Which so what? Okay. Because I was just, I mean, I was fit as a fiddle. I didn't. Right. Yep. And this wasn't your first child, and you weren't. Yeah. Concerned and, yep. and then working on the farm, I mean, I didn't, I barely gained weight and I was just mm -hmm. weeding all the time. Like, it wasn't a necessity. I only went to see her to get um, ultrasound. And but did and she know you were coming? Did she know, like, after did I you? contacted her. So, when did you, did you contact her just about the two months or did you, yeah. like, set it up, like, hey, I'm going to be contacting you in a couple months? No, it was. That I contacted okay. her. Okay. Said hi, uh, are you available to see me? I know you might be busy with other clients, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna get birth soon. Um, so what do they do when they come? What's their first? Step? First, What's I the... take a, I have appointments at her house every two weeks, depending on the time mm -hmm. of uh, how far along I am. Mm -hmm. um, and so they do a full physical exam, yes, all that stuff. I okay. take a urine uh, test for glucose levels, and then um, blood pressure, weight, um, height. Um, she'll measure from the top of stomach all the way to the bottom. Well. Um, Check. We didn't check blood. Oh, we'll do ultrasound to see where the baby is, to see the yep. sex of the baby. Mm -hmm. um, she's also legally supposed to send me to a hospital or a doctor if there are any complications. Mm. And uh, perfect. So thing was fine. Yeah. And did does or. No, and that's how we see it. I, it oh. it, it's just, I think it's the organic fruits and vegetables. Just I'm sure that's how we know that. Spread the word. Yeah. It, it, it's it's got to be healthier. So, um, from what I gather, at some point you guys started doing your own research on vaccinations, and you've chosen not we're, we're not doing the vaccinations uh, route. So, um, because but you're not a, would what what would would you to go to the doctor? Absolutely. Okay. Oh right. yes, if there was a problem, of course. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. Well, I don't know. So, oh, well, right. I'm sorry. Yeah. I shouldn't have but um, any problems? Any developmental problems? Medical problems? Anything that concerns you? No. Never? No. I mean, horse. The worst is probably him picking at his mosquito bites. And say, Don't pick at your alleys. He'll never stop doing that. No. Ever. So it'll scab, but I mean, yeah. that is literally the extent of any type of issue okay. medically or physically. I mean, well, um, we did, took them until they were about 16 months before they started walking and they didn't even walk. They just ran. So how, how big? Long, baby. Yes, right? 
it's only about 22 inches shorter than we are now. <laughs> I have to you include myself in that. You're a little, ver little more vertically challenged than I am. He was heavier and shorter. Mm -hmm. oh, that, that, that's my guy. Yeah, and he's stout. You've seen him. He's yeah. stout. Yeah, he's, oh, he's, he's, yeah. he's not a chubby kid, though. He's, he's stocky. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's about 20 ounces to the pound. <laughs> um, the weeding. Yeah. All that weeding. Yeah, that's right. Get him to work. <laughs> yeah. He's happy go lucky. So, mm -hmm. um, and so. So, is um. She's probably fifty pounds now. I, I don't. I don't know about any of this. Is John in his height weight category? Yes. They're either too fat or they're not. And that also prompted a CPS visit, is that? Yes, with the same doctor about the helmet. Okay. He referred you to CPS how many times? It was once, as far as I'm aware. So... Huh. Yeah. Well, Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot for the cookie. Yeah, yeah. look what happened now. So that was like Sanded. Sure, absolutely. Yeah, we would expect that, right? So <laughs> But was it the so was it the same time that the, the helmet? Yes. Okay, so it yes. was kind of like a couple issues on the same referral. Is we that thought they were just coming for the helmet, and then she clarified for us. And said she, this documentation here says that she's fine. So yeah. I don't know what he's telling you. Right. Uh, okay. So that was probably frustrating. Very. So she, uh, uh, three months ago, she weighed forty six pounds, and about how tall? Is or was she three months ago? Oh, um, you know. I don't. I forgot. Uh, that's okay. Right. I wouldn't know how to tell my kids. All right, I use this. That's what I was gonna do. <laughs> you a ball? Let's say if she were standing here, what, what's just your ballpark? Or you think she'd stand to you? Or she, you you probably know where she comes to your body. Yeah, with me standing, her head is right right up to here. I mean, she sits. Just like chest level. Yes. And how tall are you? I'm Maybe she's four. So she's eight? actually pretty tall. She is, isn't she? I mean, my father in law is six something. Oh, well, yeah. So where on you? He's not chest level, so. Right just over the waist? Just over the waist. Or, okay. Tall enough for great hugs. You betcha. Hmm. So he is at two. That's actually pretty tall, too.
<laughs> That's actually quite tall, too. Yeah, he's going to be a sprouty kid, too, then, isn't he? Um, so now we're going to get into a more difficult subject. And then we're going to marry it as, as well, which obviously you're going to want to talk about her, but it'll probably be difficult today. Was he excited about that? Yeah. Was he really? Good for him. Wait, or you were a few minutes early, however we want to word it, right? Sure. <laughs> Depending on who you ask. <laughs> right. Two minutes late and Seth delivered her. So did Seth know what to do with the court? Get it all. Yeah. Or he'll leave a little. So when you gave. You bottle feed, breastfeed, pump, uh, I pump. So when you gave birth, work. Yeah. Okay. Where did you work at? At the Cedar Springs Meyer. So when you were working at Cedar Meyer, while you were at work, did you leave work to breastfeed, or did you leave pumped bottles at home for Seth to feed? I left pumped bottles at home. Okay. So how do you do that when you when you set up your pump? I mean, I know how the pump works, mm -hmm. but is that something you refrigerate, something you freeze, something you do fresh every day? What about, uh, so how does that work? Uh, it depends on my shift, but usually it's, it's, I pump fresh every day, and I will leave one out on the counter, leach them in the fridge, and then there will be some in the freezer. So if he does run out during the day, there's some extra in the freezer on those days where I'm just, pardon my language, but a little more swollen than Yeah, right, usual. yeah. So when you left some, so you would leave one bottle on the counter, mm -hmm. so that could be room temperature, yeah. and then you put how many typically in the fridge? About three. Okay, and then how many did you typically have on tap in the freezer? Oh boy. Like 12. And so those are just um, in the bottle, nipple inverted, and no, how's that No, they're work? not in the bottle, they're okay. in a, a freezer safe pouch. Oh, like a, and then, oh, and then that gets stuffed down into a bottle? No, the pouch gets put into a, a pot, and then you, um, with not boiling water, but warm enough water so it defrosts, uh -huh. and then you pour it into a bottle. Oh, I gotcha. And then let it sit so it's not too hot. And so you would keep about 12 of those in the freezer, yes. guess the amount. Mm -hmm. So, how long do the ones in the freezer stay good? Okay, oh, so you... So do you, do you rotate the freezer ones out to the fridge so you can put some fresh ones in the freezer? It depends. Like if we were going to my in-law's house in Grand Haven, then I would bring the freezer ones with me. Oh, to get, yeah. to use some of those. Mm -hmm. Did, so do you date the ones that are in the freezer? Yeah. Do you put dates on? Oh, you have to. Okay. Breast mm -hmm. formula, or yeah. same story? Farm is taking off well enough, so I was able to stay home and do farmers markets. Fresh from the source, most yeah. most. Did you still leave some in the freezer? I didn't need to. But what about what if? So Seth did feed. And I, I should note that when I went back to work after already. Oh, she was. Okay. So in about so a month, she, she was already she was going to start solid food. So I would have um, a frozen solid food of like a breast milk mixed with like cream spinach and peas and ice trays, and then you can defrost that um, even in a Ziploc bag in the microwave. So was was at four months? Was she was she uh, developing well? Was she? Getting to be a 
roly poly. How did your kids develop? Um, I, every, every child's different. I know that, but they all were very um, engaging, active. Uh -huh. Yes, roly poly is a great way to describe all of them, actually. Okay. Um, the only thing they were late on was uh, walking. Okay. So, would you say like chubby cheeks and? I mean, that was she always thinner? She was always petite. Always petite. Yeah, she was never, nothing chunky about her, just, But, petite. but nothing concerning either. No, no. So she was still fitting into the size diapers and yes, stuff. Yes, absolutely. So when, because I, I mean, I've got kids too, but I, probably much like Seth, I didn't do mo most of the diaper shopping. Mm -hmm. But I know there's like months. Like yeah. there's the zero, the infant, or the t t newborn. newborn, and then it goes like what? One, two, three. So that's based on months, right? So it'll say like zero to three months or something like that, or does it say three to six months? Or is it not like zero that Zero to three months um, is usually size still newborn, and oh, then still, okay. three to six would be size one. So when she was three to six, was she wearing size one, three to yes, six? Yes, she was very, she was good with her diapers. Okay, so although, even though she was petite, she was still growing into the appropriate, the age appropriate diapers. Yeah, she was very tall. Okay. And, um, and even her, even her clothes, like her two T's and four T toddler stuff, was she age appropriate with the sizes that she was growing into? Yeah, we in fact had to get larger because she was so long. Oh. Um, but they weren't so baggy that they were falling off from her. No, okay. not until. Oh, good. Um, actually, not at all. She finally started to fit them fully when she yeah. was maybe a year. Okay. And that's all when, right. yeah. But now, feeding, he turned into a chunker for a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And obviously, he grew out of that. Um, and so, was he still age appropriate, or did he kind of go uh, an age or two over where he should have been? He was a tad over. Okay. Um, not in the diaper sense, um, but uh, I mean, right now he's wearing three T to four T diapers. But that's because they're the pull-up ones. So yeah. I'm trying to encourage potty training. Yeah, we're good. Um, but uh, his clothes right now are uh, 3T. Oh, so he is over then, yeah. Yeah, but he's, he's going to be 3 soon, and I just yeah. don't want him when he puts his arms up to have his belly out. So well, I plus you want to buy him once. You want him to last more than a week. Yeah. Right at that age, they're just sprouting it's out. And so, quickly. so, so you didn't work. When did you go back to work? Oh, about ish. February of this past year. Of this year or seventeen? This is two thousand eighteen. Yes. So this eight. And that's when I started working at McDonald's. Okay. And so in February. Mm -hmm. Sorry. So seventeenth actually. So, um, so in October, so from uh, so October 23rd to November 23rd, one to, to December to January to February. So basically, the first four full months, she was fresh from the source bre breastfed as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. And same story. If you went somewhere, she went with you. Yes. Seth never had to feed her. No. So and for four months, anyway. we never fed her. No. Okay. No way. Not that he couldn't. I just no. But why? Yeah, why if you're right there. To, yeah. mm -hmm. And it was winter cuddle time. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So February seventeenth, you go back to work. Why did you have to go back to work? Um, just to be blunt, just to support the farm. Yeah. Yep. Um, give us some startup money. Because now. You, you guys used to do fruit farm produce stand, and stuff was saying that just didn't really take off. Yeah. So now I was trying to do a you pick strawberry thing, and so I would take. I was pregnant with Mary, taking Elizabeth and John down to farmers markets four times a week from six to three. Oh. Yeah, it was grueling. It's exhausting. Yeah, and having to manage the children and then interact with the customers, and some days were just not. We didn't pay the gas to no. go down there. So. Uh -huh. I don't blame you. You pick strawberries this year took off phenomenally, and we just we're going to expand that way. So now is the farm whose passion is that? It started out as Seth's 
since I, I was born in, in Brooklyn, New York, so I didn't... Not your passion, then. Not, not then. <laughs> so, is it your passion now? Absolutely. Okay, so this is something that, that Seth wanted, and then you grew to love, or... Yeah. Okay. That's why I work at McDonald's. I wouldn't otherwise. No, right, right. So, so then, so February 17 rolls around, and, and at this point, months old, <laughs> how do you manage feeding them? refrigerate bottles. Okay. Because I was only doing four hour shifts at the time, um, just so they can see my work ethic. So I would do, um, I would leave one bottle out and then one bottle in the fridge. And I would the day and then put her down to bed before I left. And that was at seven o'clock. Right, so you, your shift was? Seven to 11. Seven p.m. to 11. Yeah, yeah for about a month. So is on a typical day, what time in the morning would be your first feeding with her? Uh, at that time? At that time. Um, maybe 5, 3.30, 3, 3. 3. 3. and okay. then So at 3.30 she would wake up, mm -hmm. and would she do a full feeding? Yes, although she would um, fall asleep, so I'd, I'd wake her up. you just keep nudging her? Sure she was full, yeah. yeah. And when you, now typically speaking at 3.30 when you woke her up, would she need a diaper change as well? No. Okay, so. She wouldn't. Because she was up at midnight before that feeding. So so the last feeding for the night would be mid. Well, we'll let's just start at 3.30. That would give, okay, yeah. give us a good time frame. So at 3.30 there would be a, um, a full feeding and her diaper was fine. No, no pee, no, no poop. She's good. Yeah, she was fine. So. Then, when would be the next feeding? Between five and six. And, and that's when I would change her. And would that be another full feeding? Yes. Okay. And I would change her then, and then... And when you changed her then, it would be due to... Urine. Urine. Mm -hmm. And then the kids would be up too, and then so I'd leave just to be awake with the kids and mm -hmm. the kids would have breakfast while Mary's either eating or sitting in her little bouncy chair looking around and then um so at four months she could sit in her bouncy chair and look around and yes okay she was always able to, to hold her head up on her own but um it was a little rocker chair not a bouncy chair I'm sorry so she would lean back in it and you put batteries in it and it rocks on oh the yes couch. yeah so the next feeding uh, we have a five to six time frame the next feeding is would have been when about eight to nine. Eight to nine. Yeah, she would feed every two hours, on average. Another full. Every feeding was a full feeding. Was yes, a, she was. Yes. Yeah. And eight to nine. How was the diaper? Um, depending on the day or um, how much she ate, I would change her poop three times a day. Okay. That I made note of. Okay. So um, it's hard to give you specifics on a, an actual day, but. If she didn't poop then, the next time there would be a poop. But it was always one in the afternoon. So either that, either this chain, this feeding or the next one is typically a poopy diaper. Yes. Okay. And the next feeding was, I know you told me but I'm not good at the math. Another but, two hours after that. So you're thinking 11 to 11 to Noonish, because noon I know she'd eat when the kids would have lunch too. So noonish. And then the kids would have their snack around two and she'd be eating again. So I can say that either the eight to nine or the noonish feeding was a poopy diaper change. Yeah, and it was not, I mean, she didn't do solids yet. There wasn't solid poopy yet. No. And then you said afternoonish was, uh, what'd you say, two, uh, two? Around two, the kids would have their snack. Maybe two to three. Um, how about the diaper situation on that one? It's just always pee. So every time I got her to, to, um, to feed her during the day, there was always pee. So every every daytime feeding had a had a wet diaper. Yes. Holy smoly. Yeah. Well, she yeah. was eating a lot. Yeah, she was. It was just yeah. the three thirty, which I was grateful for that I didn't have to change her diaper at three thirty in the morning when I wanted to go back to bed. Right. So then five ish, five to six, or is this the? Or would there only be one more feeding before you went to work? Or? Yeah. So around five, when the kids would have dinner. Okay because I would put the kids down for bed before I left also. And if she's in the winter, so the, it was darker outside, yeah. so they would sleep 
yep. earlier in the day. Um, so I'd feed everyone, and then that's bed for the night. Which would be about? At 6.30, because then I'd have to get ready for work. 6.30, kids would go to bed, and there'd be a bottle on the counter, and there'd be one in the fridge, just in case. But first you'd... While the kids were eating dinner, yeah. Would she, would she, would you put her to bed? Would she be asleep when you put her to bed? Yeah. Okay. So you would feed her to sleep mm -hmm. and then lay her to bed. Okay. Yes. And uh, there wouldn't be anything, not even a, a, a teddy bear in the bed, not okay. that early. Okay. Um, so. Um, and she would sleep until maybe midnight. So she wouldn't even sometimes need the bottle. So I would just use the bottle so it wouldn't go to waste. When I came home. So if you were already home, then you'd use the bottle. Yes. But if you weren't home, Seth would use the bottle. Mhm. Mm but what would you do with the one in the fridge then? I'd use it the next morning. Okay. This one I waste it. Yeah, at three thirty um, when she would get up again, and it was three thirty clockwork. She she knew I would sleep on the couch because I would just know that she'd be up at three thirty. So, so let me just go over this um, to see if, if I've got it right. And so, actually, I'll start with um, I'll start with midnight. Okay. So, typically, either right before you got home or about the time you got home, there was a feeding. Yes, yeah. I think she just knew Mama was home. Now, was it was it always you, or did sometimes Seth feed her prior to you being home? It was always me. Okay. I just I chose to, and he was very kind about it. He said, "You yeah. need your rest." And yeah. Like, Really, Seth n didn't even need those bottles that were left behind because he, he okay, didn't. I remember, no. Okay. And she started eating solid food a month after that, and that's when I. 3 to 11 shifts. Oh, okay. And that's when she was eating the solid food, so I, I would um, grind up um, you know, organic vegetables mixed with breast milk. Yeah. And he would feed that to her along with some oatmeal. Okay. Um, so before we get into that, let me just okay. first make this sure this timeline's all right. Okay. So at midnight, you would marry. At 3.30 uh, in the morning, she would wake you up crying. Mm -hmm. And you'd get up and you'd feed her again. Her diaper was fine because at midnight, you changed her diaper? Yes. Was probably, was that poopy? Or Most likely it was okay. poop. Yeah. She was sleeping for four hours before that. Yep. So then at 3.30, full feeding, diaper's fine. Mm -hmm. 5 a.m., full feeding, probably a wet diaper. Yeah. 8 to 9, full feeding, maybe a poopy diaper. Noonish, full feeding. If the other diaper wasn't poopy, this one was. Yes. Um, 2 to 3, full feeding, wet diaper. Mm -hmm. 6.30, just prior to you going to work, you'd feed lay her in bed and then you're off to work mm -hmm. and then you'd be home by midnight we'd start the thing over again yeah okay so now you said those habits changed at some point at about six months at six months mm -hmm. so at six months did your hours change is that yeah. why these habits changed or did they change because or a combination of both mm -hmm. um i it could have been a, a combination of both i know because she was growing she was eating more, and we were encouraging the solid food so she could gain more weight. So we just wanted, I mean, I was putting butter in her mashed potatoes so she could eat weight. Um, so when she was growing, so now at six months, was she wearing 6T? Was she wearing age appropriate size diapers? Lengthwise, yes. Length? But she wasn't filling them out widthwise. So she was wearing her three to six month clothing. And how would, how do you feel about weight size? Was she okay or was she... I was a tad concerned, but then I remembered... Um, I'm a mom, so I'll just worry about anything. Sure. <laughs> but yeah. then I remembered Elizabeth and how petite she was then and how she would fill in lengthwise but not widthwise until she was about a year. So what but what was your tad concern? What was that? Because was she just not gaining enough weight or was that the concern? It was... Possibly, it was just, um, 
I think what got to me was seeing like other babies just so chunky and and always hearing like, oh, she's so small, and I was like, yes, she's she's premature, she's petite, mm -hmm. leave alone, yeah, you know. Yeah. And then also, I forget like all these babies are formula fed, and there's nothing against formula. Sometimes mm -hmm. mothers need to do it, mm -hmm. but the formula is what chunks up the baby sure, quickly, sure. and I just didn't do that. Um, so then I got it out of my head. It was just so little. So it, you had a little bit of a concern due to her weight, but not her length. But you weren't overly concerned. You got it out of your head because you realized that she's fine. And yeah, was, I was, I was being a little bit, I suppose. Well, we all can do that. So at six months, other than a little bit underweight, you considered her to be appropriate size. Yes, and okay. developmentally as well. I mean, she was. And she was doing real well developmentally. Yeah, she was already putting her hands on the floor and and just looking around. We mm -hmm. have a play mat, and we call it. We give her tummy time. Mm -hmm. um, so especially on days where I'm off, we'll just be playing all day. Tummy time, and she'll be on the, her stomach, and she'll have her head up, looking around, watching the other kids play, or have table time, which is where they do their schoolwork. Um, the cats we cuddle with her, which is adorable. Um, mm -hmm. She'd roll over on her back, and there's like a little um, balcony, not balcony. Um, it looks like a rainbow, but it's over the head of the baby, and she can... Oh, I have no finger to dingle with. Yeah, 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 she reaches her yeah. arms up, and she'll grab at them and pull them down, and then, like, giggle at the sounds. Mm, like, she's okay. interactive. Okay. So, so you felt that she was developing good at that point. Yes. And you're educated in this area, so I am. if there's anyone that should know, it would be you. I mean, I probably so. better than us two. Uh, I'd like to think so. Paid for all that education, it should help, right? So, because you're educated in early childhood development, is that what you said? Yes. So, and where is that education through? Uh, it started out at City College of New York. Okay. And my credits transferred to Grand Rapids Community College. Okay, so then, all right, so now, now we're into the sixth month, and your hours change to what? Three o'clock in the afternoon to 11 o'clock in the evening. And so... I know this is boring, but let's go over the new day schedule now because of the change of hours and the change of At six months, have you done a diet change? She fruit, mashed up fruit, vegetables mixed with breast milk. So the vegetables include um, whatever we were growing, which were peas, spinach. Um, we got organic carrots from the store. Um, that, tend, that was a little fibrous, so I mixed it in with some peas. Um, mm -hmm. The fruits were blueberries, strawberries, apples. Um, raspberries. She likes raspberries. So when you mix it in with breast milk, explain, what is what do you mean by that? Oh, so I would, um, I would pump. I would pump some milk in a bottle, and then I would, we have a juicer or a blender. Uh -huh. So I would, um blend the vegetables, so for example, the pea spinach. Okay. I blend the spinach in there with a little water, and then I pour the breast milk in there, just so it was um, easy for her to swallow, like oatmeal. So then she eat it with a spoon or out of a bottle? A spoon. Okay. It was solid enough for um, either Seth or I to feed her with a spoon. So now, at six months old, was she using a bottle at all anymore? No, she didn't need to. She was, was still she, nursing. She was still nursing? Yes. Okay. So then let's do this then. Let's talk about um, let's, let's go over like the daily routine of that, of okay. nursing and feeding. So sure. if we would say that the day starts at midnight. Okay. Or no, that's, how... She was sleeping what, through the night at this point. She was. Yeah. Okay, so you, what in the morning time, what would be your first feeding? Uh, between 7 and 8, because the kids would wake up at that time as well, and I think they woke her up. So between 7 and 8, she would awake, and you would feed, you would... I would nurse her then. Nurse? So I'd give the kids their breakfast, and then I'd sit down. And probably a little bit longer now, maybe? Okay. Yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. She would, she would sit there and chug, and it would take both both breasts to, okay. to fill her up. What, and at that feeding, was it just breast milk? Mm -hmm. In the morning, yeah. And how about diaper? Um, in the morning, oh, yes, because she yeah. slept all night. It was typically a poop. Okay. But um, if not, it'd be a pee, of course, but it was most likely a poop. And then when was the next feeding after the 7 o'clock one? She still would eat every two to three hours. She did, okay. But the next feeding after that, so let's say if it was 7 to 8, the first one, we'll do 11. Okay. 
And that's when it was solid food. So I'd start with the nursing, and then I'd give her solid food after that. Solid, the, 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 the solid smoothie you just explained? Yes. Okay. And it would be vegetable first, and then we'd give her fruit. Because if she had the fruit first, she wouldn't eat the vegetable. So the veggies were mixed with breast milk? Mm -hmm. And the fruit wasn't. And, and the fruit was not? The no. fruit was just the smoothie? Yes. Okay. Why did you mix the veggies with the breast milk? What was the purpose? I don't, I'm oh, just curious. The veggie gets a little gritty. Oh, okay. So with the breast milk, it helps it go down easier. Not so chunky. And how much of that would she typically eat? About four to six ounces. Of and each then, one or combined? Of each one. And that was even after about a half hour or 40 minutes of nursing. Oh, so you would nurse her at 11 too? Yes. I nursed oh. her every chance I got. Getting solid foods and, you know, WebMD recommended and just like... So then 11, actually, the first thing you do is nurse her. Yeah. Then you'd feed her the veggie smoothie with breast milk. Mm -hmm. Then you'd feed her the fruit smoothie with just a little bit of water blended with it or just fruit? It depends on the fruit. If okay. it was apple, I'd have to do the water with it. <laughs> Strawberries didn't need it. Okay. Um, if I had a strawberry and apple, I didn't need it. It just depended. And, and, the, and the vegetables was four to six ounces and the fruit was four to six ounces. Mm -hmm. And... Um, So then, after that, what was the, what would be the next feeding? Another two or three hours after that. Okay, so it was one whenever she asked for it, really. Okay. So like sometimes it would be because we'd be outside, so um, we'd be like weeding or just playing outside. Did she come out with you when you were outside? Uh, yes. Okay. She loved what it. What did she do? She sat in her stroller. Okay. She right. likes to laugh at the birds and yeah. just, um, and then she'll start to, ah, ah. That's when you do, like, hey, I'm hungry? Yeah, hungry, huh? So, but you would have to say that, I, and I know that obviously that none of us eat lunch at exact same time every day, but so 1 to 2 p.m. Mm -hmm. you're feeding her again. Yeah. And that consisted of? The same thing. Nursing for a half hour? Uh, yes. It, Yep, nursing first. And it, sometimes I wouldn't do it that long just because um, we, we have work to do outside. Yeah. So I nurse her a little bit just to um, appease her so she'd stop crying. Yeah. And then I'd sit her in her high chair and feed her um, her food. So on the one to two, you might have cut back to nursing a little bit. Yeah. Okay. And she'd have um, the same amount of salad, but that would be enough for her. Yeah, four to six of each then and that as well. Yes, and then I'd put her down for a nap. Yeah. And so let me back up at the um, 11 o'clock feeding. Well, at the 7 to 8, I'm sorry, at the 11 o'clock feeding, was our diaper change? Yes. And was that? Because um, I know the 7 o'clock one, we had a, usually yeah. a poopy diaper. No, it was just urine. Okay. She would poop again after her nap. So the, the one to, oh, after the nap. So the 1 to 2 was a diaper change? Yes. Just urine? Yes. Okay. And then after that feeding... So nap was about when to when? Because she hasn't napped for the day, it'd probably be about three or four hours. So maybe, let's just say, whatever, two to five, two to six? Actually, yeah, because then she'd get up and it'd be dinner time for her and the kids and for mom and dad, so she was good on uh <laughs> So was she usually up by five, six o'clock? Yeah. Something there? Okay. Time for dinner. And then when she woke up, she wake up hungry right away. Yeah, I mean, I, I assumed because she would latch on quickly. And <laughs> yeah. I'm sure she was feeding if she wasn't. So when she woke up, you would be feeding her five, six o'clock. After I changed her poop. All right, change poopy diaper. All right, now at this point, are you, are you getting a little more solid poopy diapers, or still runny? Poopy yeah, diapers? there's more solid because she's right. been eating the chunkier food. All right, and so. And so, based in your opinion of what you're seeing in her diaper, she's digesting her food just yeah. fine and everything. If it was still runny, I'd be concerned. If there's yeah. no poop at all, I'd be concerned. Yeah, okay. But um, the color comes out fine. I mean, it's it's brown. Okay. More solid, good color. So, um, woke up hungry. So, that's a nursing? Yes. Yeah. 
Is that a full, or do we, we cut that one back a little too, or? Um, for dinner. For it dinner. Would, yeah, I would um, cut it back a little too because I also have to get dinner ready for everyone else. So I nurse just a little bit, tell the kids to clear the table, um, help dad set the table, and then nurse her while they were doing that, and then we'd have dinner. So that nursing would be a how long ish? Maybe like 20 minutes, just enough to appease her. Yeah. And then she'd have um, maybe an ounce more. Okay. Of the solid food. So five to seven? Mm-hmm. Roughly, sure. Just because I didn't nurse her as much as I would have And is that on both again? So five to seven vegetables, five to seven fruit? Yes. Mm-hmm. I gave her some variety. All right. And so that is the, six, the, the, the five to six time frame. Mm-hmm. So where do we go from there? Then uh, after everyone's eaten, the kids clear the table and they either like help dad with dishes or clear the counter or put the food away in the containers. Meanwhile, um, Rocker just watching everyone, or so we have a, a striped kitty. He was, we have three kittens, and they were born the 19th of October, and mm. then he was born the 23rd. So, so you're, yeah, yeah. So the striped one likes to cuddle with Mary in her rocker chair. Oh, so she gets right up the neck. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Oh, really cute. We have pictures. Yeah. Um, and he would just sit there right on her, by her feet, and just rock her and fall asleep and. She wouldn't usually fall asleep. There's just so much going on with the kids, so yeah. she would just watch and just make little noises. And so, obviously, the same with all of us uh, with the pictures and stuff. Um, so, like, you have pictures of Mary, like, in her rocker, mm-hmm. sitting upright, all yeah. that kind of stuff. And um, are those on your phone, on a camera, on a Google Drive? They're on my phone. On your phone, okay. We didn't grab that though, right? You, you no. didn't take that? Okay. I wasn't even sure where it was. I'm okay. not on it very much. It's just like yeah. it down. Use it as a camera, right? Yeah, pretty much. <clears throat> so, sits on the rocker, everyone else is cleaning up the, you know, doing, doing our normal nightly routines. So then, what's next? So then, um, getting exhausted. Mm-hmm. Um, she said she usually has adventurous days. Yeah. So, uh, I maybe around seven ish, seven to eight. Always depends, obviously. So if I'm giving you a broad hour, yep, yep. I put her down for bed. So I nurse her maybe ten minutes just to put her to sleep. Mm-hmm. So if I put her straight to bed without nursing, she'll get a little fussy. Mm-hmm. So I just put her. To, I nurse her, burp her, and then check just to make sure she needs to be changed. She's dry. Place her down, and then I close the door, and then the kids will have their bath and. Their PJs on and then they go to bed. So a nurse, burper, check a diaper. So now that that feeding no, no solid foods. No, that okay. was um. So that's just a quick ten minute nursing. Off and that was like an hour after dinner. So yep. Didn't so much. Yep. Just to kind okay. of knock her out. So then that takes us again then back to um. Seven. Seven a.m. Yeah. And we start the day over. Yep. She would sleep all night. So that was quite a blessing for me. And has that routine ever changed, or has that the routine that you were still on? That routine remained consistent until she started going through her growth spurt, which has been recently, where she, um, actually, now that I think about it, a few weeks after that, she was going through her six-month growth spurt. Okay. And she would sleep so much, and my... So when you say it's growth spurt... Oh, Did she get much longer? Yes, Did she much fuller. So and she got ch- chubbier? Her cheeks did. Okay. And she was filling into her clothes better. I mean, I was excited to put her in the mouth. <laughs> so when you say her cheeks got chubbier, would you then describe her cheeks if you were to look at her as a baby and say, ah, she got chubby cheeks, or just chubbier than they once were? Chubbier than they once were. Okay. And she got longer? Yeah. And so she was born at 20 inches. Mm-hmm. What did you, I don't know if you measure or not, but what would be your ballpark as to what she sprouted up to? Maybe another two inches. Okay. So was that the first time she grew? No, there was a three month period, but that was just, she was an infant, she was sleeping a lot anyway. So okay. it wasn't very noticeable, but I, because she was barely sleeping in the day at this point, and sleeping through the night, mm-hmm. we noticed that she was just sleeping a lot longer during mm-hmm. the day, waking up later, mm-hmm. and she'd take longer. So just, great. 
so that phase ended. So when you with your, with your do you did you, do you weigh and measure your kids on a regular basis? Uh, no. Um, Okay. When she come and do checkups for the kids. Um, when was and so then after the three month checkup, do you guys have a routine that you do to check up on the kids, or just as needed if they're sick, if they're not sick? Do you it's as needed. Okay. I do have um. Although uh, I did have a weight blanket, and it was um. I had a little scale, and there were like grommets on the end of the blanket that you hook onto the scale. So I mm -hmm. but, um, What's the most you ever had her weighing that you can recall? 12, 12 pounds? 14, 14 pounds? But it, was, it was a while ago because the cat got to it. Okay, so at, at, she weighed 14 pounds at about what age? Six months. Six months. And that was during, before, or after before this growth? Before the growth spurt. Oh, so 14 pounds before the growth spurt. So you would, what, as a mom, what would you guess her weight that she would have gained? After the growth spurt? Yeah. Maybe another three, three, four pounds. So seven. Maybe not even. I'm just... Let's go with two. Two? And, and again, I'm just asking you to guess things that you don't know. I'm, yeah. Really here nor there, but I'm just wanting to know just the kind of ballpark is what you think at least. Mm -hmm. um, so you would guess her to weigh 16 pounds at, at the conclusion of her growth spurt. Yeah, she definitely felt like it. Okay, and um, so you say she started sleeping more just after this routine started. Yeah, and, and that was only for about a week, and then she, I suppose, ended her growth spurt and then went back to her. Regular routine. She slept more for one week. Mm -hmm. And when you say she slept more for one week, what do you mean by that? She slept from one to one. Uh, for example, if I put her down at seven, she wouldn't get up until ten. <laughs> and her naps would be instead of two hours, four. She she's had a six hour nap before during this growth spurt, and we would always just check. But How would you check her? The door, I don't close all the way. Mm -hmm. um, there's also a hole in the door that I put there because um, I'm not very savvy with tools and I hit the door with a hammer. Mm. So there's a big hammer hole there. So I use it as a people. Mm -hmm. Good idea. There. Um, I also don't close the door fully just because the humidity slows the doors oh, um, yeah, and yeah. I don't want it to lock shut. Yeah. So um, it's closed but not completely. So I'll push it a little, and every time I push it, she won't wake up, but she'll jerk. Mm -hmm. So I'll see movement, mm -hmm. and then I'll peek at her, and I'll see her movement. You just see like a little bit of a flinch. Yes. Yeah. And then she also has a little music player that shone like blue light, so I could see her face, and I could see her breathing. And so, did you do that by your kids? Okay. Yeah. Were, were all your kids in the same bedroom? Girl? When they were infants, yeah. Okay. Did they all sleep in the same crib? Yeah. Okay. And so did that crib ever get removed out of that? Bedroom, or is that crib always there? No, it was removed because um, he was an infant in that room with that crib, and they removed it to put his um, right. big boy bed. Yeah. Okay. So for one, at about her six six month mark, which would have been February, March, April, so mm -hmm. in April ish. She had one week of sleeping a lot. Yeah. Okay. But then after that one week, she went back to the basic schedule that we just discussed. Yeah. And did her schedule ever change again? Not until recently, which I thought she was going through her nine-month growth spurt. Right. She was sleeping a lot lately. So recently, her her um, her um, schedule changed again. And when you say recently, about when ish was that? Three days ago. All oh, three days ago. Okay. So three days ago, what what happened then? We would. Um, so three today is Thursday. So uh, Tuesday was it Monday? Tuesday? What, Tuesday? You remember what day that you would specifically remember it changing, or is it, you don't have a specific recollection of that? I don't. I don't. But I know I didn't have work. We can say Tuesday. 
Yeah. Tuesday? Tuesday sounds fine. Um, yeah, so she, tell me what you noticed. She got up at, at 9 o'clock in the morning. You were so tired, weren't you? And she went to bed when? Uh, the night before that. 7 o'clock. Okay. So she got up at 0 9 after going to bed at 7. Mm -hmm. And it just reminded me of when she was 6 months old. It, was, it seemed consistent. Then she would eat like crazy. And then she would doze off again. Like she was ready for bed immediately after eating. So, uh, so I just, okay, it's consistent with the other children and with her six month old girl skirt. So I put her down and she'd sleep for about three hours. Get up again, eat. And it seemed like she wanted to go to bed, but I, I kept her up. And she hung out and was interactive, smiling. Um, but then she'd start to fuss because she wanted to go back to bed. She was very tired and she only likes to sleep in her bed. She won't, or she'll sleep in the car or mm -hmm. the truck, but. So, so um, three days ago, did things happen enough that we could establish the routine? Was she on a three-day routine? Could, like we just established two different routines that she was on. Mm -hmm. Did she have a routine the last three days? Or no, it was very. It was a bit erratic. Because she would. I would try and keep her up just because I was worried that she was sleeping so much. Mm -hmm. But um, when she wanted to sleep, she wanted to sleep. Was she eating? Yes, very well. And, uh, I mean, the Sunday before last, we went to Golden Corral, and she just feasted. She really liked the marshmallow sweet potatoes. <coughs> so you thought this was a growth spurt, and is that because you noticed her growing again? Yes, and I remembered with my other two children in this. So at six months, we were. Yeah. And so at this at this nine month growth spurt, what how how much were you guessing her at then? Maybe twenty. Okay. And when was the last time that you thought she was twenty pounds? And yesterday, when you thought she was 20 pounds, how long would you have guessed her to be? I mean, her legs would wrap around my waist. She's quite long. Because um, she was born at 20 inches, right? Mm hmm So her head here, and she would just wrap around the side there. So, uh... Okay. Quite, quite long. So these last three days that she was going through a growing spurt, you were off from work Tuesday, and that's the first day that you noticed that? Yes. And then I went to work once yesterday and I worked. And she does have a different schedule when I go to work. If you need to make note of that. Yes, what's what's that? So in the morning she gets up at seven, along with the other children breakfast for her and for everyone and that would be nursing and, and nursing for about a half hour while the kids ate and then oatmeal. Oatmeal with maybe some maple syrup in it or oatmeal with put strawberries in it. Um, just depends. Spoon oatmeal, oatmeal or oatmeal mixed in a bottle? Spoon. Okay. Nice and chunky for her. Okay. Um, and then I'd keep her up and she would be awake until I had to go to work. So she'd be awake, then it was time to go outside and help Daddy with the fields. And we'd do weeding, or I'd sit Mary in her stroller and she'd just sit and watch the ducks and just, just laugh at them. So you didn't work, you didn't work, to, was it seven days I didn't work, I'm sorry, what? You start your day again, was it, was it, was it seven o'clock that you started your day? In the morning, yep. Um, no, I'm sorry, your work day, on your days of work, what time did you start? Three o'clock in the morning. Three p.m. So you'd keep her awake from seven till three? To two thirty. Till two thirty. Yeah. And so, during that time that she was kept awake, how many other meals did she have? About four, possibly, yeah. So one she of them had was one just one nursing. Well, the 7 o'clock one was breakfast. It was nursing for 30 minutes, oatmeal, some maple syrup, or fruit, whatever you mm -hmm. had around. 
Because when would the next meal then be on 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 this different routine day? Oh, probably about when the kids want, would usually want a snack around nine. So it would be then. She eats maybe nine thirty ten. And that's um, that was when it'd be quiet time for the kids. The kids would go in their room and have they could read. They could sit in their bed quietly. Mm -hmm. um, and then and that's mama. An entire hour. Okay. And then if the kids were getting too restless, then oh, it's time to go back outside. Um, or they'd have to clean their room. Yeah. But um, for yesterday, um, the kids, we went back outside. It was just so nice out. So then um, she likes to, it keeps her quiet if you go for walks in the stroller. So we just went up and down the driveway. We checked the mail. We picked up garbage. Um, the wind will blow garbage from other places sometimes. Um, Help Daddy with the weeding. We cut some weeds for the goat, and, uh, and then I mean that's another couple hours, and then it'd be about maybe 2:15, or no, I'm sorry, it'd be about 1:30. Mm -hmm. So the last time she would have ate would have been 1:30 yesterday in the afternoon. No, um, I feed her again at 1:30, and then. Um, what was that feeding? Nursing and some oatmeal. How long was that nursing? The nursing was about 20 minutes. The oatmeal was up, took longer because she was about 8 ounces of oatmeal. Um, and then I would, uh, I think the kids were still outside. I just, um, That was at 1.30? Yeah. So then, um, 2.30 was when Mary would finish eating. 2.30 was, yep, was the end of it, and that's when I would change her diaper again and put her, and put her down. Poopy diaper. Yesterday morning, when I got her up for the day. Have you noticed a decline in poopy diapers? No. No, not at all. This is such a surprise to me. I mean, this morning when I got her up, she had spit up, and I just... So yesterday morning when you got her up at 7, she had spit up? No, this morning. Oh, this morning. At 9 when I got her up, when I tried to get her up. Yeah. I thought maybe she, she choked on, on her spit, and that's why she... What color was her spit up? Um, it was foamy and and brown. So I thought maybe it was the, the oatmeal and the fruit mixed in there. So where was the spit up at? Um, the side of her mouth. Up, um, um, the side of her face. And was that, did you think, and I don't know, was that food? Was it blood? No, it wasn't blood. It was not blood? No, it was, she didn't have any kind of vomiting of blood or anything like that? No, never. Okay. We would have taken to a doctor if well, sure. that yeah. ever happened. So you were, you were certain it was food? Yes, yeah, exactly. And it was on her side? It was on what side of her face? Her right side. Her right side, okay. And then that's when you noticed that she was unresponsive? It was yeah. this morning when you saw that? And what, what happened next? Uh, I... Uh, I, um, she Excuse me. Um, her eyes were open. Did anything look else look strange other than, obviously, just stood up and then her eyes were open? Or did, other than that, did she look as usual? It's just cold. Okay. So I went in to the, to the, just to um, get set. It's an emergency, and he's like, and I was just so shocked, and he reminded me I knew CPR, and he told me to start, so I took her from the bed, and I put her on her changing table, and um, 
I, I started CPR and I did the, the two finger touch on the chest. If you use your whole hand, you could break ribs and I just didn't want to do that, that's for sure. I know this is tough. So I did a two finger touch on the chest and her back and I um, wiped her mouth and I did... Um, so you did this on her ta on the kitchen table? No, the changing table. On the changing table, in the bedroom? Yes. So you said you did it on her mouth and then you wiped her mouth? I wiped her mouth first because it was the, the, the spit up. And now that I think about it, I think it was banana and oatmeal. You know when banana's been sitting out and it's very ripe? Oh, yeah. It gets that like brownish color. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but ripe banana is very sweet and she eats the oatmeal better with it. So what did you wipe her mouth with? A baby wipe, a okay. lavender scented baby wipe. Okay, and then you did what with that? I threw it in the garbage. Okay. Well, not immediately, no, I just no. wiped her and put it to the side. Just wiped her through it now, yeah. Right next on the changing table. And then you picked her up out of the bed? Uh, yes, and then I put her on the changing table, and then um, when I was pumping her chest, there was like bubbles, like mm -hmm. bubbles coming out of her mouth. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I thought maybe that, that's why I thought she choked. And then maybe if I kept pumping, like it would, like maybe it would come out, and then she'd like cough and wake up. So I just kept wiping the bubbles, and I was giving her air and giving her um, pumping with my fingers, just my two fingers. Mm -hmm. Maybe I should have done more. I nope, you were doing it right. And she was still so cold, and and I think maybe ten, ten minutes. I don't. It's so hard to gauge time. Oh, absolutely, yeah. And, uh, it's not just me the whole time, and he's just, he's just asking me, is she, is she dead? Is she gone? While well, he's crying, just asking me, is she gone? And I, it's just so hard to say yes. And I just, I just, I just said yes. She's just, just unresponsive. And then we had no idea what to do then at all. Like, who do, what do we what do we do? Mm -hmm. And so he called his parents, or he called his dad first, excuse me, and his dad said, okay, your mom and I are on our way, um, call the police, let them know what happened, and um, we'll, tr we'll try and get there before they do. And then we just spent the entire time on the couch waiting and crying. We did sleep, it was just, my mother-in-law doesn't. So, so this morning you found her about nine o'clock, and did you? Is that just what time you woke up? No, no, I woke up at around seven. The kids are very consistent with their wake up time at seven. Mm -hmm. And and she's always up at seven. Uh yes. Except when she's going through a growth spurt, she'll sleep in until about 9 or 10. Okay. Which is why I went to check in on her at 9, and I wondered why she wasn't up yet. Okay. But last night when I came home, I I opened the door just a tad so we could make that noise. And it's her so you finished feeding her at 2.30. Yep. And you put her to bed at 2.30. And that was the last time you saw her because you went to work then? Yeah. Okay. But then you came home at 11.30 and when you opened the door, you saw movement from her. Mm -hmm. You're certain you saw movement Absolutely. from her? Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Or else I would have said... Uh -huh. So, did you go any further into that room other than just looking through the door? No. The crack in the door? I did not. Was it the hole in the door or the crack in the door that you looked at? It was a hole in the door. I didn't open the door completely. I just pushed it enough so it would make the noise. It's a very old creaky door. So I pushed it enough. It makes the noise. It doesn't open the door completely. And she nudges because she hears it. And I just peek at her. I see her moving. And she's... What did, when you say that you saw her moving, how did you see her move? Can you describe that? She was laying on her back still. Um, her blanket wasn't kicked off, and I only wrapped it right around the knees down to her feet to keep her feet warm. Um, and she had her polar bear, but she likes to play with her polar bear before she goes to bed, so she kicked it off to the side. Um, she was laying on her back. Her head was turned to the left side a bit. So when I um, pushed the door open, she jerked her arm a little and turned her head. So I could see that her eyes were still closed. She was squinting a bit. And then 
Yes, okay, and that's what that's what she does. And what time would that have been? Around 11.30, 11.45, like, we'll just say 11.30. Because I came home, I was still in my uniform. I came home and I um, brought lemonade home and a burger, and I just set it down at the table and I looked inside and I did that. And I, So when but but she went to bed at three, wouldn't it be odd wouldn't wouldn't it be odd like for Seth that she's still in bed when he went to bed? Because she's in bed at I mean she went to she went to sleep at two thirty. She's done this before and so have our other kids, which is why we thought if she's sleeping we're gonna let her sleep. Well, yeah, I mean, I get that, but you you saw her and we saw her, and she's tiny. Tatiana, we're all parents in this room, okay? And we, and we all need to be honest. Remember in, in the car when I first talked with you, and I told you that at the end of the day, we all need to know exactly. Okay, so we need to tell her story, okay? And I want you to think about this for a minute. I want you to think for a second and put yourself in our shoes. You're the police officer. You're the police detective. You get called out to that home today. You get called to my home or his home today, okay? You, the police officer. And then you have to go into that house and you have to look at that that precious little angel, okay? Do you think she was healthy, honestly? When you look at her size and you can see every single bone in her body, do you think she was healthy? We know this isn't easy, Tatiana, but we need to know what happened to her. What was going on? So well, when did she start losing all that weight? two days. She, she's lost so much weight that you can't lose that much in two days. She, I've never seen a child that skinny. Never. And here's the thing. You're obviously a very concerned mom, but at what point, at what point did you know, what, what, what point did you think something was wrong? Because I know that you knew something, or you thought something wrong. You are an intelligent, educated woman. And at some point, you felt something was wrong. At what point did she, she, she can't even weigh eight pounds right now. She doesn't weigh eight pounds. When's the last time that you actually inspected her, that you looked at her? Tell me the truth. Every time when I change her, and I think I just may have been just, just so blinded and I just. What were you blinded by? Because I know, you listen, you are an intelligent, articulate, college-educated, early childhood development. You know. You know when you look at someone that something's wrong. I have a picture of her right here. I'm prepared to show you. That tells you. No medical treatment. As dumb as I am. I'm not near as intelligent as you. I can't speak the words you can speak. I am not you. And even I can look at this photo and I can say, whoa, something's wrong. It put tears in our eyes when we walked in there. It was that obvious. Tatiana, I'm going to be quite honest with you right now, okay? One parent to another, right? And I'm going to try and control my emotions, all right? 
I've been to a child death investigator school and I've seen photos and images of children that have been malnourished. And I'm telling you right now, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. Oh no, really? Yes. You you clearly need help too though. You're gonna okay. be dealing with this. This is baggage. This is something that. But all I want to know is what stopped you from seeking help. You knew something was wrong. What stopped you? Tell us the truth. I mean, are you guys that financially strapped? I mean, what is it? Do you not believe in health care? Do you? I mean, do you have religious beliefs? I mean, what is it? At, we do have religious beliefs, and I, we just we were praying about it, and, and we have faith that, that. When did you start praying about it? I mean, when she was born, but consistently and, and heavily the past three, three, four days. So three, four days ago, you started praying. What were your prayers? Wise and it's sticking. Like I, why? Like I, she ate so much. Like, but so why? Why, why didn't it stick? I have a strong faith as well, a very strong faith, and I think God answers prayers. I'm with you on that. I also think God puts people in places to help people, but we all have our own beliefs. But here's what I'm saying: is that you, you guys knew enough was wrong to start heavily and consistently praying. Why didn't we seek help? You knew. I just didn't. No, no, no. Say you, anything to Seth. I, Seth had to know. He doesn't ever hold her. Yes, but he was also very um, faithful and, and trust in God and, and trusted that, that it would be okay. And didn't think we needed to bring her to a doctor. We knew. How long did you know this? What the condition? It doesn't happen in three days. It doesn't happen in four days. I think I, I just deluded myself. I just didn't want to believe that. So when did you dilute yourself? When did you start? When did this condition start? When was the last time you bathed her? Oh, um, maybe two weeks ago. So about a month ago, you you notice that her bones are all showing, right? And so is that when you started happily praying? No, it was it was the past few days because uh, about a month ago it would be like full, and then you know two days later it would be sunken in, but then within the day it'd be full again. But then the past few days it wouldn't fill up as quickly as, as it used as it did. But listen, here's what I'm saying, Mary, listen. I get that, but her legs were as small as my pointer finger. So you that that didn't happen in three days. No. And I know that you know that. And I know that you wanted to get her help, but I'm trying to just figure out when did this happen? I understand that maybe you started seeing some kind of symptoms a month ago, but when when did she consistently lose all of this weight? When did she consistently become skin and bones? I think it was within a month. Cause so, she, she was always just so so thin, and so within a month. So then why, when we had a month to look at her like this, why, why didn't we get help? So we, thought, we thought she'd get better without getting help. How did you think she was going to get better? By feeding her and, and, and being with her. 
was she really truly eating the way that you were telling us? Yes. Be because, it, it, you know, if, if you want, he has a photo of her, and if you want to see it, I mean, she, I'm pretty sure that I explained this to both you and Seth when you were in my car with me. Um, you know, she's, there's going to be an autopsy done. Okay, and there was a medical, uh, a person from the medical examiner's office at the house. Okay, so we're gonna know all this. What we're saying, yeah. But, and, and you're not, you're not a bad person. We get all this, and we get that there's, there's a dynamic here that we're trying to figure out. There is a dynamic here. I'm gonna tell you, I, I know it. I can, I know there's a dynamic, and I feel that you wanted to get her help. I'm trying to just figure out why you didn't. What's the dynamic? What am I missing? Because you can't tell me that this Brooklyn, New York, this New York College, City College, Educated Grand Rapids Community College, Early Childhood person didn't know that this girl needed help, but something stopped her. I just am trying to figure out what it is. What stood between you and help? But at what point did you get better? About two days ago. Not three days ago. Two days. So two, three days ago you thought she wasn't going to get better. So then why didn't we call then? What? Because I thought that I was being doubtful and I, I, I... You, th you thought you were being doubtful of Christ? Yes. I, I thought I was... Uh, lessening in my faith and I just is that what Seth thought you that I was being doubtful no I want to know out of you two which one which which one of you wanted to go to take her to the doctor I know he didn't and I I didn't for a long time and until recently it just became a little thought in my head that maybe we should and then I was worried about CPS and about about just losing faith. We've had issues with CPS before and I just didn't want to lose this kid. So you, you, you thought you thought you lose you thought you were losing faith by thinking you needed to go to the doctor? That yeah, that I wasn't having faith in God to fix this. Mm hmm I feel stupid about it now. I just So so um, that's what we're that's that's what we're trying to figure out. Do you think? And I'm not ridiculing this. I just want to know. Do you guys think that that God doesn't want us to use doctors? No. So you, do you think God puts people in places to help us? Yes, I do. I believe that for sure. And you think doctors could be those people? Yeah. So all still. I, I, I get what you're saying, but, but this is what I'm telling you. Two days ago, I could have looked at this child, and I could have said, this child has hours to live. Two days ago, I could have looked at this child, and I, I probably would have thought, this child has minutes to live. Two days ago, if I'd have seen this child in your hands, being a stranger at Myra, I'd have snatched this child out of your hands and face the consequences. That's what I'm trying to reason with is that you so but you didn't you didn't receive the help and you knew that two days ago you knew you just said that you that she was probably what'd you say beyond help or whatever it was two days ago. So what it's not beyond help, I just At what point at what point in this illness did you think there's a good chance she's gonna die? How could you not think that? Delusional. I, I don't have a reason why I couldn't think that. I was just being such a hopeful mom. I suppose that I, I don't have a good reason for you. Sorry. What was your conversations like with Seth? You said a minute ago that you knew that he didn't want to go to a doctor. Yeah, because well, we discussed it before. That we just just discussed her conditions. 
Yes. When was the first time you guys discussed that? Maybe a month ago. So a month ago is when, what did you notice a month ago? Because I'm, I'm certain you're the one, because you said that you know Seth didn't want to go. So obviously you're the one that brought up needing to go to the doctor. What did you notice a month ago? That she was almost nine months old and just wasn't feeling into her clothing like she should. And, and you know, we talked about it and you just, just have faith and just we'll keep feeding her like we do and keep nursing her and keep her active and she'll get there. It's okay, she'll get there. But let me ask you something. If Seth told you that God told him to sacrifice one of your children, would you do it? No. That's what I'm saying, though. I'm, that's what I'm trying to wrap my head around. How many conversations did you have with Seth about this? Not very many. Not maybe two at most, just because we didn't want to worry about it. We we trusted God. And Would he get angry talking about it? No. What would happen? What would he? How would he react if you took him to the took her to the doctor anyway? I'm not sure. It, something like that has never happened. Um, I'm just asking to speculate. I think he would just be concerned that CPS would be called, but mm -hmm. not angry. Just say, okay, just know that you took her to the doctor. Expect CPS to come to the house. He's not an angry type person. No. How no. how is he as far as emotional goes? He uh, he's not afraid to cry. I'll just say that. Does he, he cry a lot? Does he? Does he? Would you say that he wears his emotions on his sleeve? I suppose. I yeah. mean, when when we were going through our, our marriage, the beginning of it, and he was very expressive about how um, about his feelings and and how he would like to be treated and how I wasn't. Excuse me. And treating him well, and and then in return told me he realized that he wasn't being a respectful husband and wasn't treating me well either. So he's very intuitive and he was and expressive, which is rare, I suppose. So today at nine o'clock, you found very deceased. What time were we called? I don't know. I think it was... Was it 11? Yeah, it was like a long time. That, why? We called, we called my in-laws first and... The, t the time that the Sheriff's Department was called to respond to your house was at 12.06. That's when they came Three. or that's when they were called? That's when 911 was called. That's when 911 was called, was 12.06. Three hours and six minutes later. My father-in-law said to wait until um, they were close, because they live an hour away, to wait until they were close before we called them so they right. can get there at the same time. That would explain two, that would explain one hour, or about the other two hours and six minutes of waiting. I think that we were in such a state of shock that we just didn't know what to do. Well, let me ask you this. Did you ever look at and how tiny and sunken and skeletal she looked and say, we're in trouble? Yeah, I think actually it came across my mind today. Did you guys have a discussion about him? No. Did he say anything to you about that? No. Did you? Why, why, why did it come across your mind? What were you thinking? Is that why it took so long to call 911? I've, I've never worked a case that's taken that long to call 911. This has just never happened before or with anyone we knew. or We waited for a response from my father-in-law. 
and to see what his advice was. He had no idea what to do. And he said, yes, yeah, she should call the police. They're on our way. Wait until we're close. But but even even by um, your father-in-law, he wasn't even called until around approximately 10.30 to 10.45. So we're still looking at an hour and a half. It may have been after 9 then because that is a very long time and it did not feel that long at all. It must have been just before 10 then. I'm sorry if I, if I gave you the no, wrong no, time. No, no, no. You, you're not yeah. expected to, to, to check your watch every time you go check something. We're not holding it all those times. I know it was before 10, but it was definitely after 9. That is an excessively long time to just stand around there. That's, so so all right, let's, let's even just give the benefit of the doubt and say it's 10. Okay. That it's 10 o'clock. So, because like you said, you know it was before 10, but we'll just play it safe and say it was 10. Okay. And... So 10 o'clock rolls around, you, 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 you check everything, you did CPR for about 10 minutes according to what you told me. So then what what'd you do for the next two hours? Because that's we, still... That's, well, we waited. Yeah. Um, before you called us, you waited for two hours before we got called. We waited for my in-laws to come. We were trying to contact them. And then we, we got a response. Um, well, we were trying to contact them. Was that like a long process to get all of them? I actually don't know. I'm sorry. I was just, I was just, uh, Seth was the one that contacted them. I didn't. Oh, I see. So I don't know how long it took, if any time at all. I was just very, um, very struck. So you said you slept. What else, what other kind of house cleaning did you do? Because you said your mother in law doesn't like a dirty house. Yeah, <laughs> um, the kids. Just to distract them, I just had them clean their room, put your toys away, and... Did they know what was going on? We told them, but I don't... Mm -hmm. So then they cleaned their rooms, and then what did you and Seth do? Slept, and then we hugged and cried. And we just sat on the couch and just, just were silent. It, it, but you know, there's just some odd thing. Obviously, you know, you know this case is odd, and you never once expressed to Seth that, hey, this doesn't, this isn't good. Look at her. Look at her. No, I didn't. Did he ever? Did he ever even make a comment about her body? You guys looked at her, and he never, he never said anything about it. You know how he described her to us on the phone? I can you can listen to the nine one one. He described her as nope, she's dead as a doornail. He gets he gets like that when he's very, very upset. He's just just distraught and he I cry and yeah, he cries but he tries to be strong for everyone. Let me ask you a question. You you had been through some training, or early childhood development schooling and stuff like that, correct? Yeah. Did you ever receive or go through any kind of like CPR training or, or anything like that? I have, yes. Okay. Let me ask you this. If you were driving down the road, kids are in the back seat in their car seats and you're driving down the road and you witness a car accident, what what are you going to do? And, and there's people that are bloody there at the scene. What are you going to do? I... And my kids are with me in the car. Mm -hmm. Well, I, if there's space for me to pull over, I'd pull over. I would check to see if anyone's responsive, and then I'd call the police so I can let them know what was going on. And if there's something I could do, I'd, I'd try. But I know that if there's any sort of injury that I'm not familiar with, I can't move the body. Okay, so you know that you can call 911, right? Yes. So then why not call 911 immediately when your child's not moving? That's what I don't understand. I think because it happened to me personally, I was just, it was my, my little girl, I, I just, in shock, I, I, I'm sorry, I don't have an answer for you, I was just so, just never can imagine that could happen. J Jason and I have been doing this a long time, and I understand, and I've seen it time and time again, everybody deals with stress and reacts to things differently. 
But if there's one thing that I've, I've seen in the course of, of doing this job for a long time is there's usually never a hesitation to pick up the phone and call 911. That is a pretty ingrained, basic. rapid, basic, life-saving response that is ingrained in everybody, especially in our country because of our emergency medical system that we have. When and did you first teach your kids about 911? When did I try it? When did you first teach your children about 911? Um, less than a year ago. Okay. So when you're doing CPR, you don't scream to Seth, call 911. No. And I, wow, and I know that that's like the second step. Or the first, the first step, actually. Did you think by calling 911 that he would think your faith was less? No, not at all, actually. I, okay. We just, he called his dad first. Yeah. Wiping the spit up from her face, and then he went to contact his parents. I don't know how long that took. I was just, after she wasn't responding, I was just sitting there rocking her. I don't know for how long. I, I have no idea for how long, and then, after he got off the phone with his dad, um, his dad said, okay, wait until we are close, So and then call the police so we can get there at the same time they do, so we can help with any anything, I suppose, legally. So, so um, the two plus hours of time that went by from discovery till 911, all, all I know, and I'm just asking if you can think of anything else, all I know of is 10 minutes of CPR and sitting on the couch and sweeping the house. Is there any other activity that occurred? Again, some of the stuff is just so weird, we're just trying to make sense of it. I understand. I, if I were in your position, I, I, would, I wouldn't understand it either, and I'm having trouble gauging it as well. I, I spent quite some time just holding her and just, just rocking her and then I put her back down on her bed and I put her, put her blanket on her and then I just checked on the kids make sure they were clean in the room and then... Did you put any additional clothing on her when you put her back in the crib? No, I didn't. So what was in the crib is exactly what was in there? You didn't change anything? Oh, I'm sorry, by clothing I just assumed you meant what she was wearing on her. That was left on her. I added her. I covered her up fully, and I added her little head, her little head blanket. You? What do you mean you covered her fully with clothing or oh, a with blanket? With a gray blanket. Okay. Was that blanket in the crib prior or not? Yes, crib? up to her knees. I, I put it. I wrap it around her knees, down to her feet, just so there's no chance of over the head pulling. Yeah. And she's never done that before. Anyway. And what about this thing that you were talking about, the head pillow or whatever? Where was that? It at? was just a comfy blanket. It was on the side on the rocking chair. I just, I just so that's the only thing that wasn't in the crib, was that one? Yeah, and she had her polar bear in there, but it was by her feet. So, um, wh when you were going through school, Jason was talking about the C the hitting on the CPR and stuff like that. Did you receive, what other kind of like developmental training did you receive getting your education in, in childhood development? Um, Nutrition, yeah. all that. Um, so, I mean, what else? Lesson, or I'm sorry, um, meal plans. Um, in terms of how much, that's why I should be eating. And I was, I was happy with how much she was eating. She was eating so much. That's why this is such a surprise to me. And is there an actual condition that prevents? Weight gain? Did you ever Google that? No. Maybe. And maybe I did and I didn't find anything. Because I, I, I would I would probably know and, and if a doctor was You would have found a lot, I think, if you Googled it. I think you'd I think you'd have found a lot on that. Let me ask you this, do you think that you realize too much on WebMD and, and Google as a parent instead of actually going to a doctor? just an opinion question. I'm, I'm just curious. 
I do. Because you've, you've, you, you've, you've kind of brought that up a couple times, and I'm just wondering. If I, like, replace it. What, yeah, I mean, do you kind of try to self-diagnose your children instead of taking them to a doctor? You just look oh. it all up on WebMD and Google and try and figure it out yourself? or? No, I do that more for myself. Um, the only thing I actually feed whatever age she was at at the time to help her gain more weight. Um, and, you know, potatoes, etc. So when you were going through early childhood development education, it was that to be a teacher or a preschool teacher or daycare owner, operator type, that's, that's for, right? Yeah, it was, it was to be a, a preschool teacher. So I know, I know I'm sure this was addressed, so what are some of the things they, they told you to look out for if you did have a student that came to school and, and had a um, failure to thrive type case? Not eating. Um, what physical characteristics? Thin. Bones. Like sunken in cheeks? Ribs. Ribs showing. Thin arms. Yeah. Do you see those things in your own child? So when you went through this education and you were, you, and they, they told you to look out for that stuff, what, what was supposed to be your plan of action if you ever saw a child come to school like that? Because you had a what to report? You'd have a duty, right? Yeah. Did you, so, so, but you didn't help your child? No. No. I don't. I was helping her by feeding her and nursing her and playing with her. But, but two, two to four days ago, you knew it was really bad. Tuesday. Tuesday, you knew it was really bad. And so that is what prompted you more than ever to be checking and looking to make sure she wiggles when you move a door and because of how she looks. I did it every day regardless. You did? That matters. Okay, yeah, it does matter, absolutely. Every, every day, every night. No, no, nobody, Tatiana, for, for one second, I don't want you to think that anybody is trying to say that you didn't love your child. No. Okay. But I am going to be blatantly honest with you. You didn't pro provide the necessary care for your daughter. Y you didn't. Do you and think you did? And we're just trying to figure out why. Do, do you think you did right? It's a very hard question to answer because she's dead. So no, but I tried. I fed her so But what much. stopped you? Tr truly, what stopped you? From what? From get from getting her help a month ago. Was it embarrassment? Was it fear? Was it? I, I mean, think, what was it? I think it was it was fear of PPS. I I think that I just thought that I was overreacting, and it was just all in my head because I I I tend I tend to to overthink things when it's not necessary, and I just thought there was another one of those. And our other two children are just so healthy, and or am I delusional about that too? Uh, like, I don't know. I, I don't as know. far as they appear, I mean, they. What? But here's the difference, though. You just said it right there. You just said it. As far as they appear, but we know they haven't appeared healthy. So that it's not a delusion. It's an observation that your other two children. Clearly appear healthy, right? And clearly didn't. That's comparing apples and oranges. So it shows that your observations were working. You weren't delusional. You know that these two appear healthy and this one didn't. So we need to go and get this one fixed. Figure out what's wrong with her. I thought we had more time for her to, to fill out. Mm -hmm. well, let me ask you this. Did, did, you, did you plan on having each of your children? No. No. Oops. We knew we 
were having unprotected, unprotected sex and we knew we were going to have a baby from it. We just weren't saying, okay, this day we're going to make the child and she will be born this day. Right. But... Real... Oops. Tasha, we, I hate to interrupt. We have to step out real quick, though. Can we get you a water or anything? Well, uh, we're just going to just slide over real quick and talk to Seth oh, and yes, just confirm some I'm of the sure, stuff. I'm sure you guys He's probably sure. he's sitting on ice right now, probably wondering what in the world's going on. So, Do you need to use the restroom as well? Um, I, I suppose I should. It's been quite some time. All right, just, just know, we'll get you some water. While you're using the bathroom, I'll walk you to the bathroom. I'll get you some water. Just know that we're going to be down. We're, we're, so as long as we've been in here with you, we're, you're probably going to be sitting in here. We're going to be down there talking to him. So... That way, at least you're not wondering what's going on. It's just we're talking to him, trying to get his side of this now, okay? Are we in trouble? We don't no, know. we don't know that. You guys are going home the same way you came. We told you that. You're not being arrested. All we're doing is we're just information gathering. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say that, no, you're not in trouble, because I don't know that yet. It has, this whole case has to still be reviewed. There's a whole process that has to go through. Um, hey, put her letter down real quick. We're going to get another detective in here to, to escort you down there real quick, okay? Well, uh, just just because it's a secure facility, Larry's like this. All right. Hey, Tasha. Hey, we're out. just finishing up with Seth in there. Okay. So Seth basically said the same thing he said, except for Seth that he he did say that. You'd have to strap him and his family down to the table before a doctor could touch you guys. You don't agree with that? I. You don't have that same belief? I do for the most part, but except for the. I mean, if somebody had a broken leg, he tends to be a bit dramatic. Um, he grew up reading Shakespeare. Oh, that, yeah. That else, maybe you could tell. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he's a smart guy, though. Very. Yeah. And he's he's very passionate and dramatic, so I'm not surprised he said that. But um. So he said that his mom, starting two about a month ago, has been telling him. I don't know if she told you that oh, yeah. that that child needs some medical care. Yes, she has. How many times has she told him that? I don't know how many times she's told him. How many times she told you that? Once that I can remember. Okay. And how long ago was that? About a month ago. Okay. When she last saw her. Now, he said that she was just at your house, not this last Sunday, but the Sunday before that. Yeah. Oh. I maybe, because we went to Golden Corral, so it could have been a few days before that, and he could be mixing Sundays up. Okay. Um, but it was definitely within the month. It's just, uh, dates are a little... So within the last... She was at your house? Yeah, and, and she still insisted on... She still insisted on it. I mean, how many times has she insisted on it? Um, it was once that... I only recall one time. It could have been twice sometimes because I um, I, I may have brushed it off the first time she mentioned it. She's like, oh, no, we're not going to talk to her. Just... So that first time that you may have brushed off would have been how long ago? I do recall actually when we went to her house. She was saying that because of her weight. Yes. Mm -hmm. Have you guys discussed her weight with you before? I only recall that being the first real time. Okay. When was the second time? Um, when she came to visit, I within the month. I'm. It just says it was it was the Sunday before last. It, it may have been, and I could we could have went to Golden Corral the Sunday before. Yeah, and it doesn't matter. Okay. And what did she say that time? She suggested instead of asked. Um, if we were going to, she, she, excuse me, she suggested that we 
noted that the cheeks are redder and fuller. So I um, thought that she was taking her food well. Okay. All right, well, we're going to try to get you guys out of here right now. I'm just going to step out and talk to him real quick and just make sure we don't have more follow-up questions so we don't have to keep bothering you tonight. So let me just, okay. just take a couple minutes with him. And uh, we'll be right back with you, okay? Um, I did use the restroom already. I'm sorry. I just, I really had to go. Oh, no, it's fine. That's, that's our mistake. Okay. We, we asked someone that was in there, and he did this to us, and he must have forgotten about it. Oh, so. that's fine. That's our mistake. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Okay. Seth's going to come in here and sit with you. It's going to be a couple minutes. One of my partners is going to run you guys home for me. Okay, because he's working late already. I left so. my salad in the back of your car, I'm sorry. You left your what? My salad, it's just garbage. That's all right. You're not, you don't need it? No. I'll throw, I'll throw it away, it's okay. So, I'll, uh, uh give you just a couple minutes, okay? Okay. Hi, baby. Hi. How you doing? Happy that I'm with you now. Me too. Did you talk to your parents at all while you were waiting? How was what's going on? Yeah, we're Because we're such bad parents. Not even allowed to talk to them. Their job is to fill cells. It's their job. So they can fill two cells right now. And that's asking me if they were angry. Like it sounded like they were trying I don't know if this is movie mind, but like separate us. Of course that's what they're doing. Like, trying to drag a wedge in between and then hope somebody accuses the other one. That's why they came at you first. Because they're, because they know them. Mm -hmm. They can tell by looking at me. Yeah. They're going to do shit to me. So if I'm going to do a breakdown and accuse you, uh, me is who they're looking for. go home and we get really big and we, I really like to not talk about it at all anymore today. Okay. It's so terrible to talk. It's so terrible. Can't ever do this again. We at least gotta take her, we gotta, there's problems, we gotta take him to the doctor at least to see. Okay. Yep. I 
I smell. Uh, I was counting down. It's hilarious. I think they must have heard me on the phone. Because I told my mom at 7.30, I'm getting up out of here. Um, getting us out of here. And that was exactly when they came through the door to come talk to me. Wow. Yeah, I was like, I'll, I'll wait for, I'll wait till 7.30, but we're not under arrest. I'm not being charged. I'm here under my own compulsion. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm free to go, so. Your parents are still there? No, they went home. They had to go meet with a CPS worker in Grand Haven. Oh, wow. But they can't do with them? Yeah. And I was just about to walk out of there when he said, hey, come on down here. So I was going to be like, oh, he said five minutes. It's going to be another two hours. And, you know, he had me put my phone out beside the door. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I went out, I got it. I went out, I got it. I'm not going to let you just hold me in here indefinitely uh, with my permission while leaving me communication with I saw like papers in the bottle cap and the lighter was out there. Cause they told me to run past the left to the bathroom and it was like 20, 30 minutes and I really had to go. So I just opened the door and I went to that. And then uh, they're, they're trying to make you seem a lot more like a prisoner than you really are right now. You're here, under your own, you're here under your own compulsion and I'm not sure. Yeah. It's really not much they can do if we wanted to walk out right now. We're doing this as a show. And not even for them, but for probably when we have to go up in front of a judge. See, it's all they want. They want to charge. They want somebody. There's got to be money involved. There's got to be a financial transaction. It's like you can't. You can't could just bury a dead body. Gotta, you gotta pay somebody. You just gotta. That was the worst case they've ever seen. They were making me feel like shit. And they were like, we know it's not your fault. We know you're a good person. But this is the worst case we've ever seen. It's like, what are you doing here, guy? I don't know what to tell you. You know, like it wasn't. Jump full of growth hormones and steroids. Me. I'm sorry, you know. I don't, you think I'm happy about it? These are authentic. Yeah, they were kind of like pushing me about the whole doctor thing. I was like, you know what the number one leading cause of death in this country is? Kind of stopped. Because they were only in there with me for about like 10 minutes. Was it? They were trying to squeeze you and get you to say something. But I did something. They took my phone too. They have it right now. Mm-hmm. And tomorrow's Friday, great. So Friday weekend.
fucking trial, I'll put the whole system on. I'll put the whole system on trial, put me on trial. You don't know who you're fucking with. Just here to help, Tati. Okay. Just remember that they're just here to help. Well, yeah, I tell you, 
If you didn't say it so much, it would make me believe you. <laughs> Who are you trying to convince? trying to make sure we have all the paperwork and everything that we need to get you guys out of here. Um, I already did a form like this with your husband, so I'm going to go over it with you. Um, your phone was back at the house and we collected that as part of our search warrant back at your house. Um, so there's two ways that we can go through your phone. Okay, I can either get you to sign a consent form or I can get a search warrant signed by a judge to go through it. So it, it's completely up to you. If you are willing to sign a consent form, I have a form here that I can go over with you and allow you to read. And if you're willing to, um, we can do that. So it's up to you. I don't mind signing it. I'm just curious as to why you need to go through that. It's just wondering. It, it, so part of any investigation, people, most everybody has a cell phone on them. And we would just be looking at communication, verifying timelines as far as when he called his dad and oh, if there was any text message conversations between you guys regarding the, the well-being of your daughter. I mean, it's just that stuff, just to verify that everything is on the up and up. Okay. Okay? T-A-T-I-N-A? -A. A after the I is A-N-A. T-I-A-N-A. What was your middle name again? Elena, E-L-E-N-A. And your birthday? that real quick and then if you're okay with that just sign right there. So what I'll do is um like I told Seth this already I'm gonna try and get both of your phones then over to the lab first thing in the morning and I will get them back to you. Because all they're going to do is image it, and then I can give your phone back, and then they basically put the information from the phone on a disk, and then I can go through it at a later oh, okay. time. So we try to get people their phones back as quick as we can. So it's not like I'm going to be holding on to this for months, okay? Okay. Or even weeks. Um, is there a passcode on your phone? No. No? Okay. Unlock it. Okay. All right. We finally we had some car shuffling going on around. The guy that's actually going to give you a ride is my sergeant that was in talking with you guys here with me. Okay. So um, I think he's just grabbing his keys and we're going to get you out of here. Okay.
it didn't look real. I mean, she was dead overnight, and then she was sitting there all day dead, and then they're going to take that? Of course. I mean, there's room at like 80 degrees. Of course. Cook ya. done like later tomorrow do you think that you'll be at home mm -hmm. there's you won't be at your parents in Grand Haven or anything so no so if I just drop because I'm not gonna have a way to call you guys so no, if I just I'll be home come, come up there you guys will be there yep okay I don't know where God is or why on this one, Tati. I'll tell you what. It's 
here are some awards I get for my service. Sorry, I need to stop. This gets a little tiring sometimes. When? This morning. Oh, when you went to go get the clothes? Yeah. Oh, what? She's getting married. He is the father for two children. Oh, okay, good. Mm -hmm. They've been together ten years. Um, she said she would Good. Yeah. He's still a little quiet about his his, his walk, but mm -hmm. she's encouraged me. Her father lives three miles away, but is very hateful to her chin. Ten years ago, when he was upset about that, still. set up in the backyard for all the kids. She had six kids there. At least they left us the truck. Oh, that was, there's a ticket on the windshield. Great. I might actually have some respect for them. I just told my mom, I was like, how many dipshit cops can be staring around, standing around an expired uh, life display tag and not even notice? Yeah, they went all out if they put a ticket on there.
Mm-hmm. Why do you care what people like think of you or stuff? Because if you do, you'll get trapped and yeah. shit like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm they're just trying. Yeah, they're just trying to butter you up. You guys start the day. You guys ready to go? Yes, sir. All right, I'll give you a ride back up there. Thank you. You want another cup or anything? Or no. okay. Okay. You alright? Okay. What's going on, Juco?